September. Uh, we have a number of items to get through this evening. We're going to start off now with our announcements. And first up is Mr. Monroe. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, and uh, thank you, everybody out there in the audience. I just wanted to give you a little update as to uh, where I've been uh, these last several months. Um, so to give you a little bit of a background, um, basically uh, this past April, I discovered a hard lump in my face. Um, it uh, thought it was an infected uh, uh, sinus or something like that. Um, you know, went in, saw the doctor, ordered an x-ray, didn't show anything. So basically in April, they finally ordered a CAT scan. They discovered a mass uh, that was in my face. Um, late June, uh, I was diagnosed with what's called uh, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, um, which is a cancer of the lymphatic system. So obviously this was crushing uh, to not just myself, but my family. Uh, you know, how do you deal with it? You got two little girls, uh, two little kids at home. And, um, you know, it was, the, the good news was, was that I, I was quickly reassured by the doctors that it was a curable form. Um, I had a lot of positive things going for me with the specific type, because there's a lot of different types. Um, but of course, once you find out it's in a, in a few spots uh, in your body, which is uh, normal for lymphoma, um, you know, you know that you have to go through chemotherapy. So uh, I had gone through uh, four and a half months of chemotherapy. Um, I knew I was going to have to go through it. Uh, I, I knew it was going to be difficult. Didn't lose weight. I actually gained weight uh, uh, because of the, the steroids. I see Mark's over there shaking his head, <laughs> yes, because, uh, you know, he knows from experience. Um, and, uh, you know, it's one of those things where, um, you know, did I want to tell the public at the time? Uh, and uh, I quickly kind of answered myself, I did not. And the reason, uh, first and foremost, is because, you know, the meetings, can you make the meetings or not? You know, when you're going through chemotherapy, you get side effects, which I had side effects. Uh, you go around people, especially during the, the cold and flu season, uh, can put you in the hospital, which it did uh, to me over Thanksgiving. Um, but most importantly, uh, what I decided and what my family decided is that, um, you know, I didn't want to give the speech, uh, you know, to the public that, you know, I was going to fight it, uh, you know, that I was going to stay strong and, and whatnot. That's not the speech that I wanted to give. The speech I wanted to give was that I went through chemotherapy, I endured it, uh, and, I'm, and I was cancer free. That's what I wanted to say. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to say that I went through chemo, uh, I endured it, and I am now cancer free. And, you know, I've been wanting to say that. I've been praying that I was going to be able to say that for months. Um, so thank you very much, and I can't believe I was able to keep it together. Um, I did want to say thank you to everybody for your patience. Thank you uh, to the board, because the board up here uh, was very supportive and, and, um, and you know, and, and a, little, a little side note, same doctor that Mr. McKee uh, had, um, and, uh, and, you know, he was a source that was able to, to tell me what he went through and whatnot, and I had, I had, a, I had a few people that, that were there uh, like that that did that for me, uh, but most importantly, my wife. Um, she was my absolute rock uh, through this whole thing. So, uh, Natalie, at home, thank you very much for everything you did. I love you. Um, that's it. So thank you for uh, welcoming back. I appreciate it. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Monroe. Ms. Frescator. Uh, yes. I um, just want to say, first of all, I feel so blessed, I'm sure all of us do, uh, that our prayers were answered and Brian as well. Uh, I have announcements on behalf of the Parks and Rec Department. Uh, we have discount tickets. They make great holiday gifts and stocking stuffers. Movie, st movie tickets are sold $9.50 each, which is a really good deal. These tickets do not expire. Their discounts for a limited number of local attractions will be available until December 23rd. Many of these tickets don't expire until 2020. Discount ski lift tickets to Pennsylvania Mountains on sale now. Current price list is available online or call the office 215-443-5428. Tickets are sold Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. At, at the Park and Rec office in the Warminster Community Park. Dog licenses. Sale of 2020 annual dog licenses begins on December 2nd. Pennsylvania law requires that all dogs over the age of three months must be licensed. The Friend of Warminster, Friends of Warminster Parks hometown hero banners are available. If you have uh, any relatives or friends or neighbors that you know that have served in the military and you'd like to uh, display their banner, 
please contact uh, the Friends of Warminster Park.org or stop by the Park and Rec office. Registrations open for the following events Snow Sculpture Contest. All of you artsy people out there, you might be interested. Uh, December 1st through March 31st, send your sculpture pictures to recreation at warminsterpa.org. Wine and Cheese Designer Bag bingo, la bingo, ladies, get ready. February 21st, 2020, $45 a person. Park reminders. Park are open from sunrise to sunset. After dusk, you must have a permit or risk being fined. Parks are officially closed during winter weather conditions. Parking lots, paths, and trails are not guaranteed to be maintained and may remain snow and ice covered for extended periods. Uh, surfaces may be slippery. Guests may still access the park for winter recreational events. Do not feed the wildlife, especially the fox, deer, and geese in the park. Supplemental feeding encourages wildlife to lose their fear of people and become dependent on handouts. Park and Rec office will be closed from noon on December 24th through Wednesday, December, I'm sorry, Wednesday, January 1st. For more information on any of these programs, please check the website or contact the Park and Rec <coughs> Department. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That's it for tonight. Thank you, Ms. Rescator. Mr. McKee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have a few announcements. I want to start by welcoming Mr. Monroe back to the panel. Welcome back, Brian. You, you look great. You really do. And as I told you the other day, now don't, don't, well, I told you in the beginning, when you go bald, your chicks are going to be falling all over you. Once that hair falls out, trust me, it works great. And, and we, we did have the same doctor. And so Dr. Andrews, we told him, you, I know I told him, and I think you reiterated that if you ever get locked up in Warminster, buddy, you give us a call. We'll see what we can do to help you. He was a terrific doctor, too. So oh shout out to Will Andrews, too. But uh, welcome back, and I'm really, really glad that you're well. So. Thank Good. you. I appreciate it. Thank you. And congratulations on your win, too, in November. We haven't had a chance to congratulate you in person. So thank you very congratulations. much. Congratulations. Uh, I have a couple other announcements, Mr. Chairman. I, um, on behalf of myself and I'm sure the board and administration, I want to send out my uh, condolences to the Hecker family. Right after Thanksgiving, uh, we lost Tom Hecker. For those who didn't know Tom, he was a uh, Bucks County Land Development and Municipal Attorney. But not only was he a terrific attorney, he was a really a terrific guy, too. Tom did a lot of business here in Warminster, and he was always a gentleman when he came here and always worked well with the staff, and he'll be sorely missed. He was a really good guy and really suffered for a few years, so my condolences to his family. I also want to thank our friend Joe Cowie over at ShopRite, who once again came up big. Um, we had talked about the, um, the uh, Crawford family who got burned out of their house recently, so I had stopped in the ShopRite to see Joe because someone was collecting gift cards for them, and, and, and Joe gave me $1,000 in gift cards for that family. So I want to thank Joe Cowie. He's, he's the most generous businessman in Warminster. <laughs> Deserves a lot of credit for what he does. So if you're watching, Joe, thank you. Thank you, Joe. And I heard an update on Chris, by the way. I hear he's doing better. By the way, I know, Judy, you had sent out something about a fundraiser they were having for him at the Ben Wilson Center. I saw that. So <laughs> I heard he's doing a little better. So uh, Also, the last one I had is uh, Monday we attended a luncheon for Dr. David Ball, who was the uh, made school superintendent of the year for 2020 in the uh, state of Pennsylvania. It was pretty impressive. It was a really nice luncheon, well attended, and uh, congratulations again to Dr. Dave. Well done. And that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. McKean. Mr. McPhillips. I have no announcements other than Brian. Welcome back, and I'm Thanks, glad man. you're okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, surprisingly, I don't have any announcements either, except to say welcome back, uh, Mr. Monroe. Uh, congratulations <clears throat> on both your victories. I your appreciate summer. it. Thank you very much. With that, we're going to move on to, uh, uh, we're going to skip over presentations. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Chairman. We actually do have a, a presentation this evening. I think Mr. McKee would like to say something. Yeah, I, you know, we normally do this later in the meeting, but I'd like to do it in the beginning while there's people in the room and folks are at home. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to go around front, and I'm going to ask uh, Mr. McPhillips and Mr. Crowley to come up one at a time. Mr. McPhillips, you first, please. Now I turn this off. There we go. That's it? Uh, at least we get it out of the way. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I'm sure as many of you know, uh, tonight is, is Mr. McPhillips and, and Mr. Crawley's last meeting on the Board of Supervisors. And uh, on behalf of the Board and the Township, I have, I have a plaque for you in recognition for your service, for your service to this Township. And uh, this, this plaque is presented to Dan McPhillips of Warminster Township in recognition of his over eight years as a Warminster, Warminster Supervisor, serving both Chairman, Vice Chair, and Vice Chairman. His contributions as a member of the Zoning Hearing Board, Planning Commission, Admire, Admire, Environmental Advisory Council, and as a lifelong Warminster resident. So thank you for your service. I know you're going to be sticking around town and volunteering for, for years to come, but thank you for your service to the Board of Supervisors. Thank you.
to my fellow board members for this. Thank you. I really I appreciate it. You know, after serving for eight years, one of the questions I always used to get was, what's it like to serve with this person? What's it like to serve with that person? And my answer was always, there's five of us who truly care about this township. And I know that's true today, and I know that's going to be true in January. I know Ken and Judy truly do care about this township. I think this township's going to be okay. I really appreciate this award. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Mr. Crowley, it's your turn now. We got you the nice one with the gavel, being that you're the chairman. Did it come off? The gavel? I hope it doesn't come off till the meeting's over. <laughs> Jason, this, this plaque is presented to Jason Crowley in recognition of his over six years of service as a Warminster Supervisor, 2019 Chairman, and founding member of the Economic Development Committee. Very well done and very, very distinguished service to this township. And I know you're sticking around a volunteer as well. So that's, that's for you. First of all, thank you to my fellow board members to the administration. I'll, I'll have more to say at the end of the meeting, but uh, it's been uh, one of the greatest honors of my life to be able to serve this community these past six years. I thank all of you for the opportunity to do so, and I look forward to serving uh, the future board in this community in a volunteer capacity in the future. Uh, thank you so much for this, this beautiful plaque, and thank you all for your support over the years. God bless. <laughs> Well, no, uh, I do enjoy playing with the gavel, so <laughs> it means a lot to me. Thank you again. Um, we'll now fo get focused back on the meeting for now, and we'll talk a little bit more later on. Uh, now that we're done presentations, we'll move into land use matters, public hearings, and ordinances. Uh, first up is consider adoption of uh, Ordinance 760. Uh, for that, I'm going to turn it over to our solicitor. Mr. Anderson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, everyone. Uh, first up this evening for the uh, board's consideration is Ordinance uh, 760. You'll recall at the last meeting we discussed this briefly when we sought authorization to advertise the ordinance. The ordinance approves collection procedures and adopts interest and schedule of attorney fees and charges to be added to the amount collected as part of unpaid real estate taxes and municipal claims for delinquent accounts. Uh, the township is considering engaging Portnoff Law Associates to collect its delinquent taxes, et cetera. Uh, this ordinance was advertised in the Intelligencer on December 9th. Um, what, what is now needed is uh, a motion to approve the ordinance, if that's what the board sees fit to do. So do we have a motion to approve the ordinance as presented? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. Um, any uh, questions or comments from the board? I mean, you know, you, it's, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but $4,400 in uh, potential fees uh, when you go down the fee list. Um, mm -hmm. But like I said, I don't want to beat a dead horse. Everyone knows yes. where I stand. Thank yes. you. Are the mics working? Everything seems a little quiet. Yeah. Ed, are all the mics working? Yeah, he's saying it's, it's working at home, so. Oh, okay. Uh, Maybe if possible, they can crank up the volume in the room a little bit. I think that's. Probably. Probably. <coughs> he's working on it. Thank you for bringing that up. Any other questions, comments? And same here. I mean, I've, I've, I said my comments last meeting. Yeah. Again, I don't want to beat a dead horse. Oh, no, so I understand. Speak. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Frescator. Uh, I'm going to open up uh, public comment. Uh, Ms. Fr Ms. Loftus and then uh, Mrs. Lynch. <clears throat> <laughs> Good evening, Bobby Good evening. Loftus, Warminster Tax Collector. <clears throat> Um, it doesn't affect me personally one way or the other whether this is approved or not, but it does affect the residents. Mm -hmm. um, I got in touch with Bucks County Tax Claims, and they said, uh, pursuant to Pennsylvania Real Estate Tax Law 72 PS number 5860.205, the 5% commission outlined in 72 PS number 5860.201A you're still going to have to pay. Mm -hmm. So whether you go with Portnoff or go with tax claims, 
you're still going to pay the 5%. Mm -hmm. I contacted my um, computer expert, and he's going to have to come down between Christmas and New Year's and redesign a new system. And it's going to cost between 2000 and 2500 in order to do that. So now you're paying 5% to the county between 2000 and 2500 to redesign my system for not that many people. As of today, I have 130 people that haven't paid. And I know of that 130 that some of them will pay. Out of how many, Bobby? Uh, 10,400. Thank you. So, um, and I went through the list today and there's, it's gonna be under 100 people. And it just seems to me a dramatic change for so few people. Um, I had a man come in yesterday. He's been in the hospital for five months, so he's out of work. And um, these are the kind of people. I had another woman come in. Um, she said, if I pay the taxes, I can't get my medicine this month. Where at the courthouse, they really do work with them. Um, it costs $20 to put the lien on. Um, they get a letter in March, and then they can start paying it. Right now, they're going to have to go to the county and pay for the school and the county, and then they're going to have to go to Portnoff to pay for the rest. So it's really confusing for the residents. Mm -hmm. So I would hope that you would really consider this and not approve it tonight. Thank you, Mrs. Loftus. Mrs. Lynch. <coughs> Jane Lynch, 1052 Gorson Drive. Brian, thank God. Dan and Jason, thank you for your service. Thank you, Mrs. Lynch. I watched the, list, the last presentation of Portnall. What I received from it was, you're gonna pay $40 for one bill. I thought, gee, that sounds pretty good. And now I'm at home and I'm thinking of this. So since you're going to approve an agreement, you must have all the fees attached in the agreement. And if you do, I would appreciate if you would inform the public of what the total fees are mm -hmm. in that agreement. Is that advertised? Or? Yeah, well, it's not in the agreement. I believe it's in the actual ordinance. It's in the uh, actual ordinance under Section 1. Okay, so we're now talking about the ordinance. Correct. And then after that, we're going to talk about the agreement. The agreement, right? So, is there any reason that I can't talk about the agreement now? No, no, certainly. No, absolutely. All right. I'll repeat. Mm -hmm. The last time I was, I viewed this on television. This gentleman from Portnoy said, forty dollars the letter. We'll take installment plans. And it sounded great. Mm -hmm. And hypothetically, when I was home, I thought about these people that have to go through this. They have financial problems, and that's horrible. So what I'd like to know is what the fees are in the agreement. After you provide them, I would like to ask this question. So I will wait until you provide them. Where's Kevin? Kevin's back there. Okay, Kevin, why don't you come up and give some background to these fees that are set forth in the ordinance? <clears throat> sure. Well, thank you for having me. That's on. That's Great. On. Thanks for having me back um, this month. Um, as, as we spoke last time with regards to our services, um, we proceed differently than the county. Where the, the county's, the teeth of their process is that they, um, they say, if you don't pay, we're going to sell your property. And at a certain point in time, if you haven't paid, that is what's going to happen. With our services, we provide incentives for people to pay early. And as a result of those incentives, we don't sell many properties. So, you know, we've heard some comparisons to the county. I, I imagine if you go to the county and ask them how many properties they sold in 2018, I imagine it's significant. Uh, our firm only sold 45 properties for all of our 145 plus clients in 2018, which was 
uh, like in, it couldn't be less of a percentage. I mean, we only listed for sale 1.4% of all of our files, and we had about 55,000 ac accounts throughout the state. Um, we don't sell many properties, so we create incentives early on for people to pay, uh, and as a result of that, people do. And, and as was properly mentioned, the first cost that goes to the property owner is a $40 plus certified postage. If they contact us in response to the letter, there's not going to be any attorney fees that are added to that. And for many of our clients, the percentage of, of property owners that don't pay any attorney's fees um, is upwards to 50%. So a lot of people will take advantage of the fact that they get this letter. And as I mentioned last time, with that first letter, there's a lot of positive incentives that we can provide. We provide payment plans. And the flexibility of the payment plans is actually set by our clients. And most of our clients choose to do the payment plans that we generally offer. But again, to the extent that the township wants to be a little bit more generous or less generous, that's up to the township to do. We also have a hardship program, which I'm pretty sure that the, the, the county does not have. And that hardship program is for people that are, it's usually limited to owner occupants, but those people that have legitimate financial hardships where the typical payment plan would not be enough, and they fill out an application and meet the criteria for the hardship program, they're part of the hardship program. And for those people, typically, their ability to pay dictates what they pay. So a lien is followed generally in those cases to protect the township. At the end of the day, those people are not be putting out of a home. Uh, and I don't believe that the county has such a similar program. Um, Excuse me. May I ask yeah. a question? Sure. Uh, what is the criteria for the application? Is it based on income? Yes. Yeah, so usually it's a, it's a formal application. It has your assets, your liabilities, special circumstances. And to the extent that the township wants to be involved in that program, the township can be as involved as it wants. The township can make the ultimate decision on that. Most of our clients, again, don't want to be part of those individual decisions. We don't know anyone, so we treat everyone the same. When we're hired, we work with our clients initially to figure out what those parameters are for payment plans, what the parameters are for hardship programs, and then there's a hard line to stand, and that's what we do, and we follow it for everyone. So no one can say that they're treated differently than their neighbor. We treat everyone exactly the same based on the parameters that our clients set with us for those types of programs. But Again, we're, we're, we're right now going to next year, we're going to have over 150 clients. They're all municipal clients, school districts, townships, boroughs, cities, authorities. We wouldn't be that many places if we weren't treating the residents well. I mean, <clears throat> our number one concern is to make sure that we're treating everyone fairly, we treat them with respect, and by doing that, we end up getting our clients a lot of money because there's a lot of people that have the ability to pay that chose not to. Those people, there's incentives. For those people that are having more trouble, we can provide flexibility and work with them in the payment plans. I mean, in, in, in some of the materials that we have, we get thank you notes from property owners. People that we've been collecting against send us a thank you note, which I think is pretty remarkable. And we send them around to our staff because, again, some of these jobs are difficult. We're having difficult conversations with the public when they they're upset, they owe money, they're not happy, there's a, a personal situation going on. We listen to these people, we work with them, and we figure out a way to get them on a payment plan where our clients get the money and then they're out of the debt that they, they know they have to pay. W with the county, what the problem is, is you know, potentially you can say, oh, the county gives you more time, but with more time also becomes more debt. So over time, if no one's really pursuing the debt and sort of letting it sort of roll into things, all of a sudden in two years, you have an obligation that no one's been really pushing on, and now you're in a real bad situation, and, and frankly, you're probably closer to having that property now being sold than you were if, if someone, you know, in, in the first year when it was due, gave them a letter and gave them a couple more contacts with some possibilities of doing something. Um, I'm proud of the system. I've been, I've been with Porno for, for it's gonna be 13 years in, in February. And I know this process works. I was on my own town school board, like you guys sit on the board, I was on my own town school board for eight years. We used this service. People would come to our meetings and typically there would be complaints about something that the school was doing, something that affected their property or their students. During my time on the board, no one complained about this service. And as a tax collector, it's a pretty easy target for someone to be upset with. No one came during my eight years on the board and said, you know, we have a problem with what, what Port North Law Associates is doing. And I took that as a good sign because when there was a problem, people would come. Um, and the reality is for, for most taxpayers in Warminster Township, they're paying their obligations on time. So now that, those people aren't bearing any burden as a result of the fact that the people that aren't paying, they're not paying anything extra. And for those people that aren't paying, we can work with them where they can, they can basically deal with this very quickly and in a very in, uh, inexpensive way. But there, there's some people that just choose not to pay. And this system, system works excellent for that because those people that are choosing not to pay there's now financial incentives to pay. So if they have the money in their pockets and they've been holding it all this time, all of a sudden they're going to find out they're going to have to pay more money. Um, 
And as a result of that, a lot of our clients, and, and we did a look last year, and 70% of our clients that did a one-time turnover, which was most of our clients, where they just turn over everything at once, 70% of them saw a reduction in the amount of delinquent accounts that came to us the year before. And what that means is that those people that had the ability to pay and were choosing not to because it benefited them, now those people get a bill from our client and they're going to pay because they realize, like, why should I go delinquent and pay more when I don't have to? Um, and that's a benefit for the township. So, you know, the combination of these things work. With regard to our fees, again, there's been numbers that are thrown out there in the 4,000s. It doesn't work that way. Um, that's sort of like equating, like, you know, my, if I go to a restaurant and my, my meal is going to cost me a thousand dollars because I'm ordering everything like we don't do that every step that we do there's a fee involved but it's incremental and at every step in that process there's the always the ability to do the payment plan or the hardship program that doesn't shut off so the, fir the first step in our process is to send out that initial notice of delinquency that's forty dollars plus certified postage okay. if you respond to that letter and pay forty dollars plus postage if you don't do anything ever in response to that we give you 35 days if you don't do anything in response to that, then we send out a notice that a lien is going to be filed against your property. Again, that now comes at a fee. That fee is $175. Can I ask you a quick question? Please. Um, because you said someone threw out the $4,400. It was me about 10 minutes ago, number one. Number two, I said potential fees. Okay. Are the fees, and I, I think we're beating around the bush here. I think what Ms. Lynch wants yeah. to know is what are all of the fees? So that's why I'm going to go three each step, and I'll tell you what the fees okay, are. But, yeah. but they are all potential fees, right? If you ignored everything or if you were or elderly and someone else was taking care of it for all these years and eventually got to that point, are these fees potentially in $4,400? Can someone, a homeowner, potentially face those fees again but yeah but I mean I mean the odds of for every single fee to be added I mean I, I again I've been there 13 years I don't think there's ever been a case where well I just wanted where, to be clear because where I, three quarters of the fees were added to up. I mean just uh, yeah. right the potential is there the I light use my up. words very carefully okay. and and you kind of called me out on that and I wanted to be clear because I was very specific by saying potential uh, I think I stressed that word yeah potential fees potential yes likely no okay. and as and as I mentioned so there's a, some of the biggest fees in this whole process are when a property is listed for a sheriff sale. So a property is listed for a sheriff sale, we prepare a writ of execution. That's $800. On top of that, there's now costs from, which aren't in here, because the sheriff's office will charge costs on top of it. We front those costs for the township, and then we charge those to the property. So any hard costs that are involved in this process, my firm's confident that's going to collect, and we front those costs for the township. So you're not putting out any money for sheriff's costs, for court fees, for for listing the property for sale. But the reality is, as I mentioned, we only listed for sale in 2018, we only listed for sale 1.4% of all of our 55,000 accounts. So a very small percentage of accounts are getting to the point that where they're listed for sale. So those are the ones that are being charged the $800, $400 to prepare for a clear sale. Like, again, so you're talking you know, less than 1.5% of accounts could be hit with those. And then of those, we only sold 45 properties. So like, again, every, every step that we do, it costs more money. But again, because we're effective in our collections and we create incentives on the earlier side, there's less and less people that are getting to those outward steps that, again, it's another cost, but you're probably not getting there. Um, again, I was looking at our records. Some of our clients, up to 50% of, of, of the, the property owners for giving clients don't pay any attorney's fees. So what does that mean? They're resolving this somewhere between the first and second step. They're doing something to stop the, the fees from incurring. Um, and that's what we want. I mean, you know, people can think, oh, these guys are going to come and they're just going to rack up the fees. If we do that, we're not going to be, in, we're not gonna be with our clients very long. And then our clients won't be happy because if we're racking up fees, that means you're not getting your money in. So if we, we, our goal is to get you the money as fast as possible. We do that by creating incentive very early on with as little pain as possible. And as a result of that, our clients do get money quickly. And right, we're not making as much fees on those clients, but we, we're with our clients for years and years and years because we're doing a good job, we're treating the public well, and, and most importantly, we're getting you money that is needed to provide services for the residents, and so it works. So, I mean, if you want, I can keep going through the fees, but that, the way it works is there's incremental steps. Um, and I would also want to respond to the comment with regards to a new computer system. I can't in a million years understand why we would need anything differently than the county gets. I mean, the county gets their returns, you give us the returns. So I'm not sure why there would be any extra cost for the township with regards to anything different. We're no different than the county when it comes to getting electronic information being sent to us, and we'll collect upon it. So again, you have to find out about that, but I, I, there shouldn't be extra expenses as a result of using us. Right now, when your delinquent tax collector has done her work, she sends her returns to the county. 
what would happen now is you send the returns to the county and you send the returns to us and we proceed on them. Um, well, can I make a recommendation? Because I'm still not answering Ms. Lynch's yeah, I'm, I'm, question. So what I would recommend is either you or I, I mean, I wasn't going to do it because I did it last uh, month, um, is read them out. And you can just tell people, listen, this is where it typically stops. Sure. Yeah, but I'll, then just give, give happy to. I'll yeah. go through. Yes. Okay. So as I mentioned, the first step is the forty dollars plus certified postage. Next step is a notice that a lien will be filed, one hundred seventy-five dollars. The next step is a lien being filed, two hundred fifty dollars. And again, between every step, there's time. There's at least thirty-five days for the property owners to pay, enter in a payment plan, enter a hardship program. Next step is filing a writ of sorrow fascist. That's akin to like a civil complaint. That's actually served by the sheriff. The sheriff comes out, knocks on someone's door. So to the extent that someone's been ignoring everything at this point, sometimes the sheriff coming out, giving them paperwork, that might be incentive to pay. That's $250. Um, going towards a judgment, there's a charge. It's called a, a letter under Pennsylvania Rule Civil Procedure 23.7.1. That's a $50 charge. In normal civil proceedings, that's sort of known as a 10-day notice. So to the extent that we're moving towards a judgment, someone's ignored all their steps at that point, been properly served by the sheriff, that's a 10-day notice. Prepare default judgment 175. Um, at that point, that's sort of like our final main step in our process is to get a judgment. At that point in time, we give um, the township notice that we've obtained a judgment. The next step would be to list someone's property for sale. We don't list it for sale before we get an okay from our client. Uh, we also give the property owner a notice that we now have obtained a judgment. The next step in the process would be listed for sale. We recommend you doing something. So there's again, there's sort of step there. Now after this, on on this fee schedule, these are all so I'm going to say like a la carte type fees for something that's happened in that process that now requires us to sort of deviate potentially from our normal fee schedule, our normal collection schedule as a result of something that's happened. So. Um, $175 is for, for to research, prepare, and obtain reissued writ. So what that means is that the sheriff has only been able to serve the property owner, whether they've been avoiding service or whether they live out of state or they've moved and haven't informed the county. There's a charge for that if we have to sort of figure out basically how can we get service on somebody. Um, Precipe to amend is $100. Again, something's happened in the process. Now we've had to amend the action. Um, Prepare and present a motion to amend, $200. That's the difference is one requires a court here and one doesn't. Um, if it's a mobile home and we need to obtain a, a VIN number for that mobile home, there's a $100 charge. Um, to the extent that the township has that information, the county gives it to us, obviously you don't have to do that. Um, prepare a motion for alternative service, $250. Now, this is one of the most time consuming things that we would do. This is where a property owner is now out of state so we can't serve them through normal course. Um, someone has been avoiding service, we can't get any service on them. So again, this is, it's usually sort of self-motivated because to the extent that they live and they, they live there and the sheriff's coming out, they can obviously accept service for free <coughs> without having to insure the cost. If they're a landlord and, and they're not paying, they know they have this obligation. Um, so this is sort of, again, this is typically caused by a property owner not taking service or doing something to avoid service. Um, a motion to consolidate claims, this would be something where there's multiple years of delinquency that are owed against probably something caused by the property owner to sort of avoid paying. If there's multiple years, sometimes we say it makes sense to sort of consolidate them, put them in one action, thus prohibiting a property owner from now sort of picking and choosing what they want to pay with this bigger balance due. Um, prepare a motion to add United States to defend at 175. This would be a situation where there's federal tax liens on the property. When that happens, we need legally to include the United States uh, as a party in that action to allow them to have uh, their rights protected. So that's a $175 charge. Uh, prepare a pretrial memorandum is a $200 charge. Uh, that would be in a situation where a property owner has filed a defense to that action, and now we're going to have to have some type of litigation. Um, prepare judgment for one, a sufficient affidavit of defense, 175 That would be a situation where an answer has been filed, but there's no meat to it. It's really just, uh, uh, I guess, to just to sort of muddy the waters potentially. We would file a motion to sort of just end it there without having to proceed further if the court would grant that. Uh, so writ of execution, now this is $800. This goes back to now sort of our normal procedure where if a judgment was entered and no payment has been paid, no payment plan, no hardship program, then we would recommend listing it for sale. That's an $800 charge. Uh, if we have to attend the sheriff's sale, review schedule of distribution, resolve distribution issues, $400. Uh, 
Again, we're talking at probably less than 0.1% of all files if, if Warminster is typical from our <coughs> other clients. A uh, motion to continue as sheriff, sale is $50. Uh, prepare and present petition for frame clear, sir, $400. Again, this is even further than the initial sheriff sale. Uh, and then services not cover above 75 to $250 per hour. This only really comes into play in our office if someone were to file a, uh, a response to the action and it was purely to delay and they were trying to basically run us through the hoops, we would say basically, that's fine. If, if you want to do this, we'll, we'll proceed, but it's going to cost you an hourly fee if, if, you know, if we proceed in court. So that typically makes people want to just resolve it instead of just sort of making us jump through hoops. Um, and then there's collection fees so that $40 plus postage, that's the first step in our process. There's bookkeeping fees for payment plans depending upon the length of them if they want to do that. And then if there's a return check, there's a handling fee of $25. Um, so that's, that's pretty much the gamut of our, of our fee structure. That's in the ordinance. That also is in the very first letter that we send to property owners. That list of fees is in there. That creates strong incentive for people to do something. They see these fees, and especially if those people have the ability to pay, if they realize, okay, I have to pay, I have to pay now for not paying, people respond one way or another, either to pay or to contact us early and set up a payment plan. Because if they do, they can avoid any attorney's fees. So um, that's, that's pretty much it. Did I answer your question? I no, probably did in a long way. But, but I do appreciate your yeah. presentation. Do you want me to stay here or do you want me to? To, do you want, am I going to have a follow-up, or do you want to try to let you go? I have some questions. Okay. Uh, but don't do your dissertation again, please. I've heard <laughs> it twice. Thank you for your assistance. All I wanted to know were the fees. So I have two questions. We're talking about people in this township who have hardships. God forbid any of us have hardships. So I think what we try to do when someone has a hardship is to help them, not slam them. So they get this $40 letter. They don't respond to it. They're sick. They have problems. Then they get a fee. And the situation is so bad that truthfully, maybe their children down the road have to step in and take care of this individual. So I don't know where you are, but at any rate, so since after they get the 35 days, what's the fee to that? And then you have a long list, which apparently is included. Is it in your uh, agreement or something? Is it the agreement? It's oh, not well. the agreement, it's in the ordinance. ordinance. In the ordinance. Okay, in the ordinance. whatever. So. They put it off, and then they pay, because of 35 days, they have to pay another fee. The more it's put off, the more fees they're paying. Now, their bill is getting larger and larger as they go along with this. But remember, they have a problem. So the children come in, and they pay the bill, the taxes, at the end of the year. Now, according to the schedule, an awful lot of items have been added on here. An awful lot of fees have been added on here. So instead of paying hypothetically 6000 7000 they could be up to 10000 This isn't the way the county operates, not with these high fees. So I wanted to bring that to your attention. I presume this is going to pass because it's the last meeting. But I want you to think about some of the people in our community that might fall into hard times. And if they can gather the money together in one year, they're paying tons of fees. Do you really think this is fair? Personally, I do not. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Lynch. Hi, Pat Boyle, 409 Grand Avenue. I had a family thing, so I'm not really up to date on this, so bear with me mm -hmm. here. I don't understand. We have the best tax collector in the county. Our percentage of collections is the highest around. When I ran for tax collector, I had questions, and I called the state to ask them some questions about the tax collector's office. And they said, do you know Bobby Loftus? 
And I said, well, yeah, that's who I'm running against. And they're like, oh, well, ask her. She'll help you anyhow, because she helps everybody out. And she does in the township. And we have such a low rate of, of bad, uh, bad tax people because of that. And I don't understand why we want to add another layer of something in there. Mm -hmm. The county is, takes care of that less than 1% and works on it. And we have very few people go, go to have their houses sold. Mm -hmm. They follow the same procedure as he's following without paying $40 a letter or $175 a letter and all of this other thing. So why are we penalizing people who are in dire straits? Mm -hmm. I had a family emergency. My father had a stroke. Mm -hmm. I've been down the hospital. I've moved in with him when he came home. My father is on the ball. He pays everything one time. He's got everything lined up. The bills are coming in. He hadn't paid the bills in months. We didn't know that. We're asking Dad, how are things going? He says, fine. We believe it's all fine. He got all these bills from ambulance services. We're like, Dad, what happened? Aren't you part of the ambulance service? He says, no, Warminster stopped sending them to me, and I keep getting this thing from Doylestown. He didn't realize that Warminster Ambulance changed to, to, to Central Bucks. So he's paying full price for ambulances. These are things we have to check on our parents closer, I realize now. But I can see somebody like him, who's a very intelligent man, getting into a problem because he doesn't know who's sending him a letter and he's throwing it in the trash, mm -hmm. which is what he did from Central Bucks. I think we need to pay attention to the people in Warminster and the ones that are getting into this position and try and help them and not try and hurt them. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Thanks, Pat. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening, everyone. Ken Hayes, 50 Lingo Drive. So, um, my only follow-on with what everyone else is saying is that um, the gentleman from Portnoff said um, he, he talked about people that just weren't going to pay or, or refused to pay. So I guess my question is, what's the difference? Because if they're not going to pay, then does it matter if you have a, a, another third party trying to collect um, the would, arrears taxes? I would say right now the difference is about 50000 a year, right? That's well, how much it's costing us to collect. So it costs the township. So, 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 so we're paying fifty thousand dollars to we're, to make those. We're paying him his hourly rate to collect okay. when they do it for free. Okay. Another thing I might add that the um, county cannot collect street lighting and trash hauling fees. Correct? Am I correct about that? We have to do it. So okay, but my, so I guess my clear. point being is that if if they're not going to pay, and this and I'm just pre this is just a comment, huh. if they're not going to pay, then rather if it's the county or Portnoff or our attorney, they're not going to pay, correct? No. So that, I guess that's my point, and that's the only point I wanted to make. Okay, thank, thank you, Mr. Excuse me, Jason. You said it was twenty thousand. Twenty, Mr. Mr. Ryan Ozzie, um, for twenty nineteen, the total of the delinquency that was dropped on our desk in April was forty. 8,000 and some change. So let's round up 49,000. To date, we have been paid through my collections of 31,000. The remainder, in addition to uh, the fees and to cover my cost, we have liens outstanding of 35,800. So the total cost to the township to date is $20,000. That's for, that's for 2019. So uh, to Mark's point, the difference between our office doing the collections and Portnoff is you're billing me on a monthly basis. Now, my costs ultimately will be paid when the liens are paid, but you're paying up front to my office. With Portnoff, you're not paying them on the front end, you're getting paid on the back end. So it's not, for, it's not free, but, you're not, but there's no out-of-pocket costs. But we do have the ability as a board to uh, give direction to Portnoff, if, if we know there's a resident that is going through a major hardship. Am I correct? Come on up, Kevin. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, again, we're Kevin, come in. Microphone, please. Yes, and Kev, just real quick so we can kind of expedite this a little. Sure. Assuming the board sees fit to grant the ordinance this evening, you'll then consider, uh, um, so that gives the framework of the collection procedures. Then you'll consider an agreement to engage Portnoff to, to, do, your, to do your collections. Thereafter, in January, uh, Greg Schuster and who, whoever else is going to be appointed to meet with Portnoff will set forth those protocols. And, you'll, and the board will have an opportunity at that time to set forth those thresholds and to ensure that the certain policies 
uh, or are, um, are followed by Portnoff in terms of uh, individuals in need and hardship cases and the like, correct? Absolutely. I mean, we're, we're your attorneys, so we represent you. So if we go with your direction. We're, you're, our, you're the client. Um, but absolutely, if there's someone, but that's the, the key is sort of in the beginning, if we set good parameters, like someone who's a real hardship, they're going to be in the hardship program. And, and, and that's the way it works. So we, 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 have, a, we have a staff of, of over 70 people. Like, we're very hands-on. Like, we, don't, we never just push a button and spit out an account. And then unfortunately, that's what the county has to do. That's, that's the way they, they work. They, this is due. They push a button. The next step is taken. We don't just push a button. So if this person's a hardship program, they're going to be in the hardship program. We're not going to proceed. If someone contacts us and, and on the phone and, and, and talks about a situation, they don't have to say the word hardship. Like if, if, the, if it's obvious that this is a hardship situation, we're going to be the ones who recommend to them. It sounds like you might be a candidate for the hardship program. Why don't we send you an application? So, I mean, I mean they, it's sort of trying to make us look like we're this big, bad entity. Again, we only represent municipalities. We clearly work with people. We get thank you notes from the people we work with. And we have a lot more ability to deal with the people that are indigent than the tax land bureau. I mean, if the same scenario that was mentioned before where the, the bills weren't being looked at and, 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 and the elderly person was, it was a little bit sick, it's worse for the tax land bureau because they're just going to sell the property. I mean, we're going to at least try to reach out a lot of times before we even get to that stage to prevent that from happening. So the county doesn't do that. The county, if it's due, they take the next step. And there's long periods of inactivity where nothing happens, so there's not even a notice that something's going to happen. And then eventually it's sold, and the property's then, boom, if it's up for sale and there's been no contact, the property's sold. We're going to reach out a lot more times before that point to get some kind of action. Again, you can say there's fees involved, but the reality is for most people, those fees create the incentive to pay. And when I, when I was mentioning before about someone who's not paying, I'm not saying that they're never going to pay. But I'm saying there's some people that hold the money in their pockets because right now there's a benefit. If, if, if you're not being actively pursued on a debt and you can hold the money in your pocket versus paying it, you're going to hold the money in your pocket because you might have something else to pay or whatever. But if someone's pursuing you and creating incentives for you to pay, all of a sudden that money in your pocket now, it makes more sense to pay rather than to hold it. And that's, that's sort of the game change. And that's why, again, for a lot of our clients, over time we see less and less delinquents because those people that had the money in their pockets the whole time, they're just going to pay when it's due rather than holding it. So that, that's sort of the difference. What's, uh, just a, a question for you. Sure. What's, what's the average, uh, you might not have this data in front of you, I, I, but I'll, I'll ask anyway. Um, what's the average fee, do you think, the typical delinquent taxpayer pays to your, your company? My gut is it's, it's probably between, I, I, don't, I don't even want to guess. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to guess between the step of notifying them of the lien and, and the lien being followed. I would say probably most at that point. But again, if you had to average it all out, because right, there's gonna be some that are gonna have to pay a lot because they went through the end. But again, most, I mean, probably, again, potentially close to 50% of the people are actually not going into the, the first letter, notifying the lien. So but that would be my guess. Okay. That would be my guess if I had to guess an average, but it, it's kind of no, a I guess. appreciate you taking a shot. It's kind of a guess. Um, I just wanted to clarify. So if we had a situation where Pat Boyle was talking about her dad, being um, out of sync because he's been in the hospital and he's not been paying the bills because he's got all you know a lot of medical things going on we could intercede on behalf of the township and say okay we're not going to charge them these these fees because of the situation yeah, I mean look yeah. this is where okay, can I you know one thing I would recommend to the board is I would not want the board or myself getting involved in any individual circumstance so I think the best thing to do is work with port and off and set those parameters mm -hmm. ahead of time so it can contemplate these kinds of, of situations but once you start looking at cases individually as a board uh, things can get very messy and very uncomfortable very quickly and we do do things that are nice I don't necessarily <laughs> want to put them out in public some of the nice things that we'll do for some of our clients but we work with our clients and we work with the constituents and if someone's in need we do what we can to make sure that they have the ability to pay and, and not hinder it solely as a result of our fees okay thank you any more questions no okay well. george lewis crescent avenue uh, been up and more in Hepburn to Tour Authority for about 30 years, and we used Portnoff, and our clients were very happy. Nobody complained, um, and they took us a long time to get our money sometimes because they're very they have, do have a hardship plan that they work with the people. So I can tell you. Thank you, sir. Thanks, George. Mrs. Loftus. <clears throat> Regarding the trash and the light, the county is working to try to bring that back into the county. 
but because they have new commissioners next year they have decided it's not fair for their commissioners that are going out mm -hmm. to do something so they're waiting for the new commissioners to come in mm -hmm. and then they'll reevaluate that maybe we can do the trash and the light through them but having served in this township in another capacity everything is written in the contract Hardship is not by the discretion of Portnall. It's in the contract, correct? Having said that, could you read that to me? Again, if the board enacts the ordinance tonight that sets the framework for the fees. We're talking about, you said when I initially talked to you, you said you could go through that, and I said, could I stay here and talk about Portnall oh, yeah, certainly, and certainly. the fees? No, just, but just follow me, though. So, so the ordinance, that's the first thing that the board's going to consider this I evening. understand that, and I thank you for that. Sure. So that's the framework. Then the agreement I, I, engages. I get it. I serve on boards. I understand. In January, they will set those parameters as to what constitutes a hardship. So you mean that you... You would, wait a minute, excuse me. These people would vote on a contract to engage the Port parameters North, to engage of Port North. what actually is a hardship? To engage Port North. To and this board's going to change? That's why it's, uh, why we're allowing boards. the parameters to be, uh, the board that's incoming, I think, deserves the ch choice of how those parameters should be set, not the outgoing board. That's why it's being done in January. I think that's very fair. So it's not going to be voted on tonight. Correct. So the, the, I think this will clarify yeah. it. The, the agreement, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's nothing in the agreement that talks about the hardship plan. That's something that will be given direction by the new board uh, to Portnoff. Am I correct? I can, just, I can just add real quick. I think this will answer very quickly. If I, may, I think I may help answer your question. But the reality is in, in our contract itself, we, have, uh, we put in a section obligations of the township. So these are things that the township, we're saying that And the that's in the contract. Correct. That Correct. they have. Correct. They yeah. have that right now. If I can just add. Do they have that right now? You can ask them. I'm yeah. trying to yes, get an answer. Yes, yes, we have. Yes, yes, we have the contract. Oh, you do have it. So what? you could have answered my question. <laughs> no. I don't think that. Let, let him speak and then I'll answer the so, question. So, the rise, so in, our, in a section in the contract, we put what the obligations of the township are. We're saying these are things yeah. that the township. Okay, let's get to the hard part, please. Yeah, I am. We're saying these are things that the township has to do. So these are things that we want the township to do, That's right? That's good. And one of the things we're saying is they have to adopt a policy for hardships. Correct. So we're the ones that are saying, please do this. So again, to so the extent that you're trying to portray in any way that we don't want hardships, like no, we're no, the, I'm trying we're the clarification. Ones saying, we're the ones that are saying that we want a hardship policy because that's what's going to work best for the for our clients. So it's, I'm telling. I mean, well, that's great that you want to have a hardship program. That's absolutely great. But what are the criteria? Again, that's set that's set individually by a client. Okay, so not to belittle this any more seriously. So in the agreement they're going to sign tonight, either there is a criteria for hardship. It's a policy. We're saying that pol a policy will need to be adopted, and that's what's going to happen. But it's, is it in what they're going to agree to tonight? No, no that the board is not agreeing to a policy tonight. The new board will develop a policy. So you aren't voting on anything important all tonight, correct? No, they're voting on, there's two things on the agenda. Item right. one is the ordinance to allow for the collection of delinquent fees. Item two is the contract engaging Portnoff. Okay, so there's nothing about the hardship policy in the contract that you all The only could thing agree in, with. in the contract states that a policy must be developed, which is going to be left for the new board to do. Okay, well, that's uh, as an individual who signed many contracts for a very large school district, this is unique. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lunch. All right. Hi, Judy Hoover, St. David's Avenue. I, I'm just wondering why you don't just, since the new board is going to be developing the contract for this and the policy and it's really a change of lawyers. The lawyer does it now. Our lawyer does it now. And it's a change of lawyers now. Why don't you just table it for a month so we can go over the whole thing tooth and nail and see? It seems like the returns are de minimis for what we do with less than 1% of the township having delinquent taxes. And then, um, then we can see exactly what all the fees are, look at it, and look at what the policy should be and see what 
kind of criteria should be there for hardship. That's just are we, are we what changing I think. lawyers? Hmm? No, I think she meant change from changing lawyers for the who's collections. Who's collecting it? Oh, yeah, oh. it is. Yeah. Yeah. Hiring a new lawyer for collections, right? For, right? Yes, you are correct. <laughs> I mean, that's the bottom line. Yes. So uh, that's that's my opinion on it. And there's still a fee that has to be paid to the county. Am I right? So I don't think get much. I don't think we're getting. I, maybe we are. It sounds good. It sounds like a good program, but I don't can't see offhand how we're getting enough benefit from this to make it worthwhile. Thank you, Mr. Silver. Yes, sir. Hi, I'm Mike Farris, uh, Cornell Drive. Yes, uh, from what I've heard last meeting and this meeting, there's fees involved, mm -hmm. no matter who we go with. Correct. The difference is, right now, the fees are being paid by me and everybody else that lives in Warminster. Correct. If we change the port and all, it'll be paid by the people that actually owe the taxes. It's very altruistic to, to do it the way we're doing it now, uh, but I didn't get a vote on that, and I'd like to. Um, and I, mean, I never complained, but... Yeah. I know you didn't complain. <laughs> but uh, to your point, yes. So basically, it's the big difference yes. is the delinquent taxes, which is a small portion, as everybody's saying, the burden of the fees is spread out across Correct. the township, whereas those fees will go down and will be paid by the people that actually owe the money. I, I mean, I, I don't have to be a mathematician, but I mean, it's a no brainer as far as the benefit. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that, that's how I feel. I mean, it's just, it's a no brainer. Thank to you, me. Thank you. All right. All right. With that, I'm going to call a question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nay. Opposed? Nay. Chair votes aye, passes three to two. Okay, now that the ordinance has been passed up for consideration, there's a second <coughs> item, which is the agreement to engage Portnoff Law Associates as your collector of delinquent taxes for 2019 and going forward. The agreement has been reviewed by my office. Uh, we have made certain uh, revision suggestions, all of which have been uh, honored. Uh, by Kevin and his and his firm, uh, so the board can consider authorizing the execution of this agreement by way of motion. Do we have a motion? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. All right. Questions. <coughs> Public comment on this. Call a question. Whoa, 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 whoa! whoa. Oh, you okay. still got have input. We didn't make a mind. There's, there was no vote taken yet. It's okay. You can still have input. Come on up, Pat. You have something to say? Come on up. Yeah, come on, okay. just call a question. It's, it's, just it's okay. Oh. Everybody? I wanted to know if it was put out to bid. Was it put out for other companies to make, submit to it? To take on the program? Is it a requirement? There's no requirement for this to be put out to bid. Not a requirement, Pat. There's no. I was just wondering no. if, if where they came from, how we found out about them. All of that um, stuff. I don't mean to cut you off, but on balance, uh, Portnoff is is the preeminent collection for the delinquent taxes for the, um, Bucks and and I believe it's Montgomery County. Kevin, are you in Delaware we're County in, as well? We're in 23 counties. Uh, 23 mm -hmm. counties. Okay. You know, but I was just wondering where you know where it all came from, why nobody else was asked that type of thing. And I also believe they've done work for the authority as well, as noted tonight. All right. All right. I'm gonna call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Nay. Chair votes aye. Passes 310. Okay, and then the final piece of the uh, Port and Off items this evening is the resolution 2018 36. And on balance, uh, this resolution states in pertinent part uh, that the township is taking on the obligation of collecting the delinquent uh, 2019 real estate taxes and, and going forward. And uh, it directs the uh, County Tax Claim Bureau. Uh, to not take any further action to do uh, such collecting. Is there a motion on that resolution? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right. Questions, comments from the board? Questions, comments on the resolution from the public? I'm seeing none. Yes, sir. Just remind me. Uh, Go ahead. We're on, we're on 2019-which which one are we on right now? I just want to make sure I'm in the right Yes, spot. no, we got you. Up. Oh. It Which says four. We're on 3A Roman 
little two, right? Right. So there's a typo. Uh, no, it should be 2019. 2019, right. Yeah. Oh, I got 2018. Okay. Yeah, it's correct. So 2019-46, pardon that. Right. Yeah. Do you see it? You got it on? I got you. All right. Do we need to amend the motion? Hold on a second. This, I have 536. What do you have? He yes, says what I have. Do we need to amend the motion? Why don't you amend the motion to 2019-46, which is, to be clear, the resolution directing Bucks County Tax Claim Bureau not to collect delinquent real estate taxes on behalf of Warminster Township. Yeah, I'll, I'll make the amended motion. And is there a second? <clears throat> second. All right. Any other? Nothing else? Any from public? Okay, call the question. All in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Nay. Nay. Chair votes aye. Passes through term. All right. <coughs> Item B. Okay, next up is the application of Christ Home. They are here this evening. <coughs> Their counsel, John Van Leuvene, is here. They're seeking conditional preliminary final land development approval. And if John would be as kind to uh, give the board the high points of the high points of the project, and then we'll move forward with the approval resolution. Be happy to do that. It was 14 years ago uh, this month that the township in Christ Home entered into a master plan agreement to, uh, first of all, to give the township a preview of what Christ Home had in mind over a long-term build-out and expansion of its programs, and to give them the ability to do their forward planning. In front of you tonight, uh, phases 3A and 3B of that plan, and discussions with the township staff, uh, the township staff suggested to Christ Home that he essentially fill out what it was going to do by way of infill on the balance of the project, uh, at least the project as it currently can conceive of the project being completed. Uh, rather than having me describe it, I'm going to ask John Bryant, the CEO of Christ Home, to give you a uh, brief you overview of what this project entails. I can tell you fast forwarding okay. that we have seen a We've seen a draft resolution of the conditions. We discussed this project with the Planning Commission. The Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval. But I think for the benefit of, of both the board and the people who may be watching at home on television, it would be nice to have uh, John give you a little brief overview of where we are and to hit the highlights uh, because one aspect of this project uh, is, uh, is somewhat unique and I think you might be interested to hear about it from John. Thank you and good evening everyone. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to present tonight. Um, this is a map uh, of our current entire uh, retirement community campus. Everything you see in white is existing. Okay. What we are proposing here with the expansion into phases 3 and 3A would be an extension, first phase here, of our main building that would include 30 uh, ind independent living apartments as well as some additional common space for all of our residents. Uh, later in a phase 3B, we would add an additional 33 apartments in these two wings over here. We're also proposing to add some additional parking space here, which we definitely need in our community. Uh, parking is right now at a premium for residents and guests alike. Uh, included then is over in this area where I'm circling is currently stands a two-story uh, building that we call the Manor House. We are proposing to demolish that building and in its place put two more of what we call our Shepherd's Crossing Cottages, which are all these units you may be familiar with. That would complete the circle here that we call Joy Court with two additional cottages. And then out here along Street Road is the new building that Mr. Van Lubinay just spoke about um, that's going to be uh, funded through some private donations uh, through the McEwen Foundation, and it will be the McEwen Respite Care Home uh, for short-term respite care. Uh, we believe it's going to be uh, the first of its kind in the Commonwealth, so that's kind of exciting to bring that here to Warminster. Uh, the idea is that over six million people in America are, have Alzheimer's and dementia, are being cared for in their own home by family and loved ones. And about 40, Stanford University study shows that about 40% of the time, the caregivers actually predecease the one they're caring for because of the difficulty of doing that. And there's probably, and we know there are many people right here in Warminster Township and the surrounding area that are living in this way. Uh, our goal here is to actually create a short-term respite care stay of a weekend and up to two weeks so that the caregivers can actually receive respite from 
the rigors of caring for their loved one. So it's a rather unique program. It'll be licensed with the Commonwealth under a personal care license. Okay. So that's the uh, basic highlights of our expansion plans at this point. And uh, thank you very much for allowing me to present. Thank you, John. Thank you. As I indicated, we have uh, reviewed the draft resolution that your solicitor prepared. Uh, the resolution as it's drafted is acceptable. Mr. Bryant's already signed it, uh, indicating consent. So unless you have any desire to go through any of these review comments at length, uh, we're prepared to have you entertain a motion, hopefully to approve this last phase and let Christ Home uh, finish out its plan. Just a quick question to the staff, everything's in order? Yes, um, in fact, uh, it was kind of nice where most of this was contemplated 14 years ago and then I've been involved for the last 12 years. Uh, so much of, the, much of the engineering, stormwater management, all that's already been worked out. So uh, staff supported the preliminary final application, which normally wouldn't want to scope uh, a project this size. But uh, most of the engineering site work has been worked out prior when we did phase one, two, and three. Excellent. What, uh, the only question I have, I'm the tree guy. So, long Street Road. <laughs> you never disappoint. Uh, no, got it. I was going to take my shot. Uh, wh what are we anticipating with respect to what it's going to look like along Street Road there? Uh, you know, with respect to plantings and things of that nature. Eric, Eric can you comment on there. that? Excuse me. You, you need the take microphone, the, Eric, please. The microphone. Um, there's, Br there's, a, there's an exit. <laughs> I think it's on. There's an existing berm that's landscaped out there today, um, and there's existing street trees. We're not going to touch any of those. Okay. Uh, it's going to be behind that berm, behind the street trees. Um, there'll be some added landscaping. It's in, in an area that's right now on the <coughs> field. Um, there's, I think, one or two trees that need to come down to put in the driveway uh, for this connection. Uh, but beyond that, and, and those trees will be replaced per the township ordinance. Um, so. Yeah, I, I was looking at the, the satellite view, and obviously it doesn't really show the berm because it's two-dimensional. Yes, uh, exactly. But the, the, the trees look like they're, they're fairly, um, uh, I don't know if they're juvenile, I don't know what types of trees they, they are, but uh, that's what I just wanted to double check. A lot yeah. of those trees that were planted uh, from the last phase of the development okay. were planted mm -hmm. just five years ago. And this um, is probably a couple years old. Right. What I'm right. All right, thank you. All right. So... So furtherance of uh, the conditional preliminary final land development approval this evening, a resolution has been prepared. It's resolution 2019-33, and it makes approval condition upon uh, several items. Uh, the first is complying with all applicable township review letters. Uh, briefly, that includes uh, the township land planner's letter of November 25, 2019, uh, the township zoning officer's letter dated December 2, 2019, the Township Emergency Management and Services letter dated December 5, 2019, the Township Engineers letter dated December 6, 2019, and the Township's Planning Commission's approval recommendation uh, dated December 10, 2019. It is also conditioned upon the following, signing of the Township's required land development documentation to the solicitor's satisfaction, posting the requisite financial um, security for the project's improvements as defined in the resolution, Satisfying all applicable township code, sewer authority, and water authority requirements. Identifying all project stormwater inlets and outlaw stru outfall structures. Obtaining all applicable permits, having jurisdiction over the project, and paying all applicable project-related fees and costs when due and owing. Applicant has also requested a total of uh, 12 waivers of the saldo and water and stormwater management ordinance respectively. Um, our township consultants have reviewed those um, waivers and have no objections to them. So with that being said, does the board uh, want to consider a motion approving this resolution? And if so, you can consider that this evening. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any uh, questions, comment from the board? Just a comment. You know, I appreciate your ongoing support of Warminster. You guys always do a top-notch job over there and keep Thank up the good work. Thank you. Very responsible development. It's a much needed service too, as you said. Looking forward to having it in our township. Thank you. Is there any questions or comments from the public on this matter? All right, I'm seeing none. I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Aye. aye. The chair votes aye, passes five zero.
Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Happy holidays. You too, John. Happy holidays. Mr. Ionozzi. Okay, next up for the board's consideration is the conditional preliminary land development approval for Mara 2 LLC. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Kurt Schaefer. I'm the uh, attorney for the applicant. With me is Mello Ionieri, uh, the principal behind the uh, LLC that is the applicant, and June Pak, our engineer. Uh, the project is, is fairly straightforward. Uh, the LLC is the owner of the property at uh, 1020 Bristol Road. That property is two lots. Uh, they are both zoned C1. One lot is vacant ground except for a, a concrete pad and a small shed out back. And the other is a uh, fairly old and in need of uh, uh, repair residential structure. The proposal is to demo everything that's on these two lots right now and create a, a medical slash dental office building, a, a use 24. Uh, we've received the needed variances from the zoning hearing board. We received a recommendation for preliminary approval last week from the planning commission. Uh, we have reviewed the proposed resolution as drafted by your solicitor. The terms thereof are acceptable to the applicant. There are certain waivers that we are requesting, and they are accurate, and they are reflected in the resolution. Thank you, sir. Um, I'll ask the Mark question. While there's the problem. Anything we need to know on this one? Uh, this is only for preliminary approval. Um, main reason is they need to work out everything with PennDOT. <coughs> we need to work out our traffic study. Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, we don't anticipate Penn not coming with, back with anything. I hope Mr. Nell, <laughs> he prays that there's no more uh, changes with, with, uh, with this property. Uh, there were some improvements already done out there, but mm -hmm. um, the staff does only recommend preliminary. They've agreed to that okay. uh, as a condition. So um, we don't have to work out every detail tonight. I think um, all the waivers are supported by the staff already. So okay. um, it's, it's a pretty small project. If it wasn't for the issue of the traffic stay in Penn, right. uh, we could wrap up everything. So um, they'll need to resubmit and come back and see see everybody in you know probably february march right. um, once they have that worked out but i have no other comments and uh project is uh is ready to go it might be a small project but a key location for the township mm. so yes we look forward to the improvements thank you mr kenner for your support. thank you craig so in furtherance of the conditional preliminary land development approval this evening resolution 2019-34 has been prepared by the board uh, and sets forth the following conditions attendant to the preliminary approval. The first being complying with all app applicable township review letters, including uh, the township emergency management and services letter dated December 5th, 2019, the October 10th, 2017 County Planning Commission review letter, the May 2018 township traffic engineer letter, the November 25th, uh, 2019 township land planner letter, the November 27th, 2019 Township Zoning Officer Letter, the December 4th, 2019 Township Engineer Letter, and the December 10th, 2019 Township Planning Commission Approval Recommendation. Uh, the additional conditions include drafting of the ultimately, upon uh, final approval of the project, uh, drafting uh, the applicable land development uh, uh, documentation, posting uh, the requisite amount of security for the public improvements, complying with all the applicable zoning relief that has been granted in association with the project on the property, satisfying all applicable township code provisions, identifying the project's stormwater inlets and outfall structures, obtaining all applicable <coughs> permits, <coughs> Uh, from uh, entities having jurisdiction over the project and paying all applicable project-related costs. Um, in this matter, uh, applicant has sought six waivers as noted by our engineer. The township consultants have reviewed those, have no objections, and uh, as noted by Mr. Schaefer, applicant's council has reviewed this resolution and has no issue with it. So next for the board is to consider uh, the approval of this resolution by way of a motion. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Is there a second? Second. 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 Any uh, further comments or questions from the board? I just have one question, ahead, yeah. Mr. Kennard. Uh, so, when the traffic issue is straightened out, that'll be um, that'll be talked about at our final. Yeah, that'll well be reviewed by a traffic engineer. Um, we have some involvement if it affects the land development <laughs> plans, and then um, they'll submit 
that study, all the reviews with their final application uh, to Planning Commission and also this board. So Planning Commission will see it one more time and you will as well. Thank so you. If there's any issues to work out, it'll be done at Planning Commission. Staff level usually tries to work out any significant issue and then it'll proceed to Planning Commission. Okay. Board. Thank and you. ultimately this board's approval, the final approval would be contingent upon that review letter as well as others. Okay, thank you. I had a comment too. Um, it's, a, it's a little off of the land development, but I just want to recognize Nell Ionieri, who's in the room tonight, who we don't see in this room too often. Nell Ionieri is a, a staunch, staunch supporter of the Warminster Rotary Club. And if you go around town and see those corners that have Welcome to Warminster and the Rotary Wheel on them, Nello maintains them, takes care of that. He, he's, he's one of those uh, Joe Cowie types in the, in the township of Warminster. So I had to recognize you while you're in the room, Nello, and welcome. Great job with that, yeah. by the way. And it's so good that people have been asking about that sign you've had on that corner for like three years now. Coming soon. <laughs> so I think it is really coming soon, isn't it? Okay, good. <laughs> But again, thank you for all you do for the folks in this township. You do uh, hard work that people don't even know what this man does for the township. It'll be here before the Weiss. We know that much. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Or Lidl. Or Lidl. Stop. <laughs> all right. Uh, is there any questions or comments from the public regarding this project? It's a preliminary approval tonight. I'm seeing none. I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And the chair votes aye. It passes 5 nothing. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Happy thank holidays. Have a Merry Christmas. Nella, thank you. Happy holidays. Bye, Rita. Bye-bye. All right. We're now up to our first public comment session. This is opportunity to comment on any non-agenda items subject to the five-minute guideline as recognized by the chair. Is there any public comment this evening? First session. Ms. Ball. Then. Hi, Pat Boyle, 409 Grand Avenue. As I said earlier, my father has been ill off and on this year, and I cannot tell you how absolutely fantastic the Warminster Police Department, mm -hmm. Central Bucks Rescue Squad, everyone has been absolutely phenomenal. And I don't know if everybody realizes how much these people do there and how, how kind and gracious. We have a lockbox on the house, and they text the police officer the lockbox number for them to get into the house if I don't get there before the ambulance. It is just these guys are just I can't I can't thank them enough for everything that they've done for us, and it's just been phenomenal. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. It's a it's an excellent point, Ms. Boyle. Mm -hmm. There are our first responders, our police officers, are you know, do a lot of things that never get noticed. I mean, it's been great recently that a number of our officers have been noticed for their heroism in the line of duty, but there's a lot of times when they're just doing the grunt work when there's a storm and power goes out and people need an oxygen tank taken out of the closet. They do so without any uh, fanfare. And for uh, you to recognize them, we do appreciate that. Thank you. John, come on down. John Priovis, uh, 674 Joseph Avenue, uh, Warminster. Again, we got to talk. So, uh, DD Toe, the, the, the schedule going into the end of the year and I got a call today and then we looked at it but um, the rotation was like modern A to Z Glens modern A to Z Glens and then it went from modern to Glens so the guys asked me are we off that week and I said you know what it's a good question let's ask to see if that was a mistake um, or is that the rotation so if that's a rotation we just need to know so I can tell the guys because they were anticipating working but uh, since it says Glenn's, I guess it may be his rotation. So it's not in order as it followed through the through the I, course of the year. I have the foggiest idea, but I can get you an answer. Okay. The second thing that I have a question about is um, I came uh, last month and talked to you guys about the Warminster Auto Body, which my wife and I both own. Um, we asked if we could um, get some consideration on maybe coming on for another round of duty tow. Since it is a separate uh, business, um, thought that we could probably work to use tech te technically. Uh, I talked to many people, and they said that I could actually lease the trucks back to myself, which would then make me qualify for that uh, round of uh, duty tow um, for that location. We tried to uh, email uh, the township manager. Uh, we, I think the first time we, we did that, the uh, website had a different uh, email 
which mm -hmm. Mark and I talked, and Mark gave me Greg's uh, right. email. Um, I was told through the grapevine that I, pro I wasn't going to get it. Um, we didn't get any kind of uh, letter or email back on the position of the township as to whether it was something that could happen. Uh, should we apply? Should we take it up next year? Um, that kind of stuff. So my wife was a little concerned. She thought maybe that she should uh, at least know what we were going to do. Yeah, I apologize for that. I thought you were notified. Uh, we did get the information from you. It was reviewed by the solicitor. The solicitor determined that it was not compliant with our current ordinance. Uh, so therefore, that would not be an option available to you. Okay. So we, we just we thought that it would come back to us in some kind of letter form or email. Again, I thought it did. I apologize. That's if it okay. Did. I'll look into uh, that. I just just as long as we know what what what, what we're doing and uh, where yep. we stand with it, you know, it's a decision that townships does, and uh, you know, of course, we asked them. We my wife wanted to know, so really. And, didn't and if you want to give me the back, if you want me to give you the background real quickly, on November 26, I took a look at this. Um, and the two sections that precluded you doing from what you were proposing to do was that you have to have two trucks per location. Correct. So you can't, um, and they have to be registered to that location. So you can't have a truck at one location serving two. Um, the second piece, which we couldn't get around either, was that licenses and the trucks from the other locations are not transferable. So you had those two pieces. I analyzed it also to see if there was a way that you could seek some sort of waiver from the provisions and mm -hmm. you could not. So I emailed both the chief and the township manager mm -hmm. uh, that evening indicating, I know that's not the answer that you wanted to have, but assuming you get that second truck that you talked about the last month, you should be able to be considered for the next okay. round. Okay, that, that's not a problem. Yeah, Te technically you, there, there, there is ways around that because if you have salver tags or, or, or uh, uh, repair towing tags and they're registered to each place and you have the, the vehicles, uh, through like either the holdings company, which I, I believe I could have transferred them into that and then leased them out to uh, each side, right and left, and, and it could have happened. But that may but be- But that's not an issue. The, right, the, the concern, under the code, it's not The transferred. concern here is I, I, I only asked for that was in, uh, as a, a, for the consideration that you would consider putting me on if I did get the extra truck. My thought was if I could, use the other trucks since I still own them and we own them could I use them till I got the other truck so what I'll do um, is like I did the last time years way back when they had the same issue with the number of trucks I'll go get the other truck and then next year the next board I'll come back which in the ordinance gives me the right to ask for it and I will ask for it. Correct. Okay, so I'm okay there. So and you just want to make sure that you consult 13-805 that gives you all the... I'm in it. Yep. Believe me, I probably know more about that ordinance than you guys do. Sure. <laughs> okay, thank you. Merry Christmas. Happy yes. holidays to everybody and to the public. And we'll see you next year. Thanks, Thanks John. John. God bless. God bless. Is there any other public comment on this round? There will be another one later. I know. Seeing none, we're going to move on to a consent agenda. And for that, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Schuster. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, tonight's consent agenda is as follows. Item A is approval of your minutes from your meeting on November 21st, 2019. Item B is approval of agreement with Huff Associates. This is a five-year extension of a partnership we have with Northampton Township, Lower Southampton, and Upper Southampton Township for a recycling grant application. Um, it's been a successful partnership. Uh, all this, uh, the funds that we do get for these recycling grants uh, do flow into our San sanitation fund. Item C is authorization to execute an employee separation agreement as discussed in a previous executive session and uh, in conversations with you individually. Uh, item D is approval of the Lidl traffic signal easement for Roberts Road at York Road uh, as required for PENDA for the Lidl uh, project. Item E is the approval of Lidl Warminster Plaza reciprocal easement agreement amendment. Uh, we, uh, the township actually owns a very small portion of land over there. Why? We have absolutely no idea, uh, but we're not spending lots of time and money trying to figure out. Uh, but an easement is required for the project to move forward. 
Item F is Lot 5, Franklin Corporate Center, 201 Veterans Way. Release number three, final from escrow in the amount of $252,641.79 as recommended by the engineer. Item G is Street Road Industrial Park, lot number 17, release number one from escrow in the amount of $132,285.60 as recommended by the engineer. And items H through R are all resolutions uh, for traffic signal applications. This is for all the grant work uh, that's been going on on Street Road. My understanding is that previously uh, PennDOT did not require these applications. Now they are, which is why they're coming to you uh, all in one, one large group. So it's an application for the following uh, signalized intersections. Street at Johnsville, Street at Jacksonville, Street at North Norristown, Street at South Norristown, Street at Mearns, Street at Madison, County Line at Centennial, Jacksonville at the Walmart Access, Street at Lewis, Street at York, and County Line at Jacksonville. All right. Do we have a motion to pass the consent? Is That's there a second? Second. Any questions? So uh, just uh, these are applications for grants that no this is actually the application with penna to actually do the to do the work yeah so we're getting ready to, to dive into Which this. i believe a lot of this has already been done it's to, well yeah. yeah more or less document it and memorialize yeah. what was done the work's already been yeah. done yeah, yeah. Hmm. any other questions anything from the public i'm going to see none i'm going to call the question all in favor aye aye, aye. chair votes aye Senate agenda passes five up now I'm going to move on the finance report. Mr. Treasurer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make a motion to approve the November transfers. Also, the supplemental bill list dated November 27, 2019, in the amount of $790,862.11. Also, the uh, can we, we can do them both, right? Mm -hmm. Also, the bill list dated December 19, 2019, in the amount of $3,230,161.98. Terrific. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All right. Any questions, comments? Any from the public? I'm seeing none. I will call the question. All in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Passes 5 0. Mr. Schuster, the uh, November, financial, November financial statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Six yeah. years. We are still generally tracking to budget with the exception of the um, budget amendments, which are the next item. Awesome. Can we have the next item, Mr. Chairman? Oh, can, can I <laughs> just ask, so we're, we're trending where we are. So um, fund balance. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sure you can't give me an exact number because it's rotating month to month. Yeah, I, I can't give you a, a number right now. We haven't done those calculations. I can tell you um, that we're going to end the year in a deficit, which will mean a decline in fund balance, but I can't tell you the, the final numbers right now. I noticed we, we just signed a check to pay this year's MMO. It's substantially less than what it should be because we're using the smoothing method and at the 8% assumed rate of return. Correct. The question right. about fund balance was, was there, is there any way possible that we could take some money out of fund balance and inject it into that, in, into that pension fund before the end of 2019? Well, you certainly could. Um, I would not recommend it. Um, first of all, putting money into the pension fund is always a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, don't get me wrong on that. Um, however, um, based on the fact that our fund balance is declining, um, and that we have these financial issues that have to be worked through uh, with a new board, uh, that doing that um, would limit some of the options and put a little more pressure on. Uh, additionally, um, one thing to keep in mind is that they do a two-year valuation on the pension plan. So whether the money is put in December 31st or January 1st, from an actuarial standpoint, is not going to make a difference. Uh, okay. Now, now I wouldn't, I'd be saying something Someone different a year ago. Question. Okay. Yeah, so, for, so if the new board would like to do that, they certainly can. But from that, it's not going to get you any benefit other than if in that time period you see the market returns uh, on that money. But okay. I, I would recommend not doing that at this okay. time. Okay, that's why I brought it up. I wanted to hear. Okay. Any other questions on that particular point? All right. Can we talk about the next item? So the next item is budget amendment number six, uh, as addressed in resolution 2019-2. Uh, 
It says in here 30, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, I got 30. Went out of order? Okay, 2019-30. Uh, uh, as you're aware, per the second class township code, after three months have elapsed, the board can uh, make adjustments uh, to the adopted budget. Uh, we do so regularly through the year, and usually the last one of the year is, is the biggest. Uh, and it's no exception this year. So the budget amendment uh, right now is as follows. Uh, in the general fund, you will see large transfers uh, for the implementation of salary adjustments uh, for the public works contract, uh, the employee separation agreement, which you just approved, uh, purchase of body cams, uh, the engineering light item, and PFM analysis that they have conducted, and also other minor adjustments in there. Uh, in the ambulance fund the, and the uh, fire fund, you will see increases only in the revenue side. That's for adjustments on the pilot revenue. Uh, liquid fuels, you will see an increase in the pilot revenue um, and other minor expenditure uh, change, excuse me, not liquid fuels, that's a library fund, uh, increase in pilot revenue and other minor expenditure changes. Uh, park and rec, you will see an increase in the pilot revenue and use of tree escrow. Um, for the golf fund, you will see a large offsetting revenue and expenditure of $600,000. That is to show the proceeds coming in from the debt from the, uh, the, the, the irrigation project as well as the funds going out. You will see a likewise uh, offsetting revenue expenditure uh, next year when the project is completed. Uh, on the debt service fund, you'll see an increase in the pilot revenue. And on liquid fuels, you'll see a line item adjustment and two line items uh, for the purchase of salt. Okay. Um, do we have a motion to approve the resolution? Motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Is there any questions regarding the resolution? Is there any questions from the public regarding the resolution? I'm going to see none. I'm going to call a question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Resolution passes 5 0. All right. Moving on to unfinished business the adoption of the 2020 budget. Mr. Schuster. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the budget process has come to its conclusion. Uh, there's been several meetings uh, regarding the uh, budget where it's been discussed. Uh, at your previous meeting, you did uh, put forth a proposed budget. That budget has been properly advertised in accordance with the Second Class Township Code. Uh, it is on your agenda this evening for your approval. Thank you. Is there a motion to adopt the budget? I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Is there a second? I'll second. Um, questions, comments, anything before a vote? No. Just my comment. Um, I'm passing this budget. I know there's a tax increase in this budget. I think this tax increase, these particular increases should have been done two years ago. It goes into park and rec because we have to upfront the park work, park work that's going on. Uh, the huge one is the, the millage increase to the fire fund because we have to pay for the workers' comp for our volunteer firefighters. That's the least we could do for them. And that's what this millage increase is for. There's a small increase for the EMTs. Pat, you had mentioned them earlier. I mean, that, that's the least we can do for them is fund them, I would think. And, and if we do not increase the millage to park and rec and to debt service, that park project that we've been working on for several years goes away. Can't even go out for bid. And the grant money that we've received for that, correct me if I'm wrong, three point something million, goes back and we most likely will never get a grant again from the state. So. But we have to do this. I, I feel personally this should have been done a long time ago, but I'm, I'm glad to vote for it. I mean, I don't know why voting for tax increases is so difficult. I don't understand it for the life of me. I always, I've always taken the politics out of it. I would have been glad to vote for tax increases for the past few years. I'm glad to. And I'll do it again. And if people want to throw me out when I'm up for re-election, go ahead. My job here as a supervisor is to pay the bills. It's my job. And that's what I'm doing. So that, that's all I have to say. I'll get off my soapbox. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Any other, uh, Mr. Monroe? The, the only thing, I mean, for, I don't know how many people at home have the budget and reviewed it. It's either five or 500. Uh, but um, just to clarify the, uh, with Mr. Schuster, I know the language in there makes assumptions about the sale of the municipal authority, yes. but that's just an assumption. It does not mandate anything with respect so to the, that, correct? So the budget is built on that assumption. It is not a mandate to do any action. Uh, come January, the board can take whatever action that they would like. Um, additionally, the budget can be amended, as I said earlier, uh, after three months have elapsed in the fiscal year. Mm -hmm. I think. 
And all I'll say is that I've, I've been pretty uh, adamant all year that there are certain things that we'd have to do and have to raise taxes on. I believe this budget is the culmination of those things, especially when it comes to uh, the fire fund, which is a longer term concern uh, that I have both, you know, not only in the short term, we're doing things to, but long term, that's something that we have to pay a lot of attention to. So, and I know that the board, incoming board will do so. Um, any qu comments, questions from the public before we take the I vote? I just have one, one oh, comment, ahead, Mr. Crowley, thank you. Uh, I certainly feel that um, we, we should have the tax increase for our parks and rec and for especially our fire firefighters. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything against, against that. Uh, I just don't. Um, I I just don't approve of the language in the budget, mm -hmm. and I voted against it prior, and that's why I'm voting against it tonight, not because of that tax increase. Just wanted to clarify that. That's right. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Any, uh, John? I uh, uh, John Priel was uh, six seven four Joseph Avenue. Um, at one of the meetings, I stressed a point that I thought that we should have raised the taxes, and I do agree. You know, numbers don't lie. My father always taught me that. Uh, we're falling short, very concerned about what's going to happen next year. I hope the next board has the foresight to fix the problems and do it in a timely and speedy fashion due to the fact that uh, it doesn't look pretty at the end of the year next year. So um, I look at the numbers like my dad always told me. They don't lie. Uh, we got to deal with it. I agree with Mr. McKee. You know, you have to fund some things. Thank God we got something through to help out, uh, take some pressure off some of the other uh, uh, departments in the in the township. Um, we're still looking at a big hole at the end of the year. We need to fix the police pension fund. That's nationwide. It's just not Warminster, Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. I have friends in California tell me the same thing. I've talked to people in Pendell and Humeville and other townships, lower Gwinnett supervisors who got also uh, lost uh, their seat. Uh, same problem all across the board. So we're not alone in this, but the work is a team. Let's get this done and do it as quick as possible and let's see if we can come to a resolution and make it work. And John, thank, this, you. thank you, John. And this, this park improvements here is an improvement to all of our property values and to our community. I mean, it's Absolutely. it's a great investment and, and it's a nothing investment. We're not paying for this. We're being reimbursed for all this work. We're have to, going to have to pay to maintain it going forward, but well, that's okay. But you can't. You, you have to also. You also have to look at. You have to move forward with it, because you just can't. Uh, you you want people to enjoy it. You want people to use it, and it's a big part of our uh, township right now. Every day, going down Bristol Road, you see people walking and running and taking their strollers with their children, mm -hmm. and the park is a big vital point in the township. You have your uh, your car shows and all the other things over there. And we want it to be first class. That's the opinion uh, for myself. I, 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 want, I want the best. You always try to bring businesses in here that will complement the township, uh, fixing things, uh, doing the road projects and all that stuff. We want this place to look good. A lot of people tell me they like living in Warminster, and I want to stay and, here. And how I've, invested, I've invested my life here, been here my whole life. I bought properties. I'm looking at another one. You know, of course, I don't like the taxes going up, but I sure don't want to use the guy that was in the back seat to have to make a deal <laughs> for my property taxes. <laughs> and it'd so. be nice to see that that, uh, that chain link fence go away from the park. Absolutely, where the wire used to be. Come on, it'd be you nice to see that go away. Look across the street and see what they've got. And that's what ours is going to look you like know, in a very near future. I mean, that that fence has been up since in the fifties. Right. You know, we we need to do something. You gotta you gotta beautify it, like you right. said. It increased property values. You have people say they've got nice parks and blah, 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 and, and I'm all for it. So it's a little bit of money <laughs> across the board. It's not a lot. You have, just have to do it, you know. So, but the big thing is next year and what we're faced with. It, that, that's important. Hopefully everybody uh, can work together and get this job done. Yep. I don't know which angle uh, the next board's going to go, but, boy, they got a job to do. Have a good day. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, John. Any other uh, public comment? All right, come on down. Uh, Frank Albert, 17 Walk Street. Uh, just wanted to get a little clarification just for um, when you mean, uh, what you mean by contingent upon um, in the budget. Does that mean that right now there's not enough money to cover the budget till the end of 2020? 
and there'll only be enough money to cover <coughs> so the spending and if something is sold or if there's some <coughs> other raise so, of money in some way. So the budget is built on a sale of the sewer and water system and contemplates those proceeds coming in and then um, being invested. Uh, invested in the pension fund, invested in OPEB fund, and invested in our savings account. Um, if the new board decides not to do that, uh, then the budget would have to be reworked. And yes, there would have to be changes in both expenditures and revenues. Uh, so one of these sources of revenues that could be used um, is fund balance. Now, by the last calculation that we have, uh, we would have sufficient fund balance uh, to barely get us through 2020. So although the budget is built on these assumptions, it is not a foregone conclusion or, or something that can't be reversed. Yeah, we're not right. taking action to sell the Water Authority by adopting this budget, correct? Right. right. That, correct. I, I just meant to say, like, in the the spending that's in this budget um, is covered right now as as of the sp as you're adopting the, the it, spending like. that's in the budget is predicated on a sale of the sewer and water system that, that's what i was kind of trying to get a clarification on like there's not and that money that you're spending in the budget isn't actually there unless it's sold or uh, correct if, the, if there's not a sale right. then there's there's no money yes right. is there enough to get through 2020 but by our calculations, yes. Yeah. So there is enough in the, in the general fund to cover, but then you're right. at zero at the end of 2020. Right. So, yeah. so yeah, I understand what you're saying. You're, you're asking, is it is it the only way we could pay those things is if we sell right. or, or, or raise taxes, or is there enough to cover in the general fund? And right. all yeah, three are just... options. At the, this gives right. you the most options moving forward. It doesn't tie the new board to one specific path. Right. I just thought it meant, like, if you're going to adopt this budget, that there was no money in there unless... No. something was sold like you were like you were spending money that we don't have like it's not there yet <laughs> no 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 That's we're not I mean. we're not we're not doing that okay so it yeah. is covered like yeah it's covered. Thanks. no it's a good question it's a, it's a good question uh, yes sir good evening bob welsh hollow avenue yeah so in this budget if you do not sell the water and sewers the authority yeah is there any money to pay the bills yes the, the answer in 2020 is yes beyond 2020 there will be insufficient reserves so if the if that occurs there's going to be several options that are available one is to go ahead and sell assets such as the sewer and water system uh, the other is to do a tax increase in the general fund uh, the budget that's uh, on the agenda tonight does not although it has tax increases in, in some funds does not have any tax increase in the general fund so that's another option. The third option would be to dr uh, drastically, dramatically reduce expenditures. Okay, so if you don't sell, how much tax increase? A max? So Put a max. So my um, recommend, it depends on what uh, the, the board wants to do and what they want to fund, but my recommendation that I made at a previous meeting is that if uh, the, the sewer and water system is not sold, uh, the millage and the general fund should be raised to its maximum of 19, which would need court approval. God bless you. Thank you. Any other public comment? All right, I'm gonna call the question uh, with the budget. We roll call, Mr. Monroe? Aye. Ms. Frescator? Nay. Mr. McKee? Aye. Mr. Uh, McPhillips? Aye. And uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Crowley. Chair, <laughs> Mr. Crowley, votes aye. The uh, budget passes 4-1. Thank you all. Um, now we do have to do one other piece of business around the budget. <coughs> and uh, Mr. Schuster. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. The final action uh, to support the budget that was just adopted would be to pass Resolution 2019-31, uh, which does set the mill rate and fees for 2020. The mill rates would be as follows in the general fund 11.09, ambulance fund 0.19, fire fund 1.5, library fund 1.85, park and recreation <coughs> fund 3.5, Debt Service Fund 2.02 .02 for a total of 20.15. Additionally, the resolution has you approving uh, the trash fees the same as they are this year, which would be $440 per year per household uh, with a senior discount uh, for those that are qualified of $55 per year, which would bring it down to $385. 
per year for seniors. Thank you. Is there a motion? Motion. Is there a second? I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Uh, any questions or comments from the board? Any questions, comments on this item from the public? I'm going to see none. I'm going to call the question. Uh, we'll just do this one. All in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Passes 5 0. All right, we're going to move on to new business and uh, tax anticipation note. Mr. Schuster. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as we discussed at a previous meeting, due to the uh, dwindling fund balance uh, for cash flow purposes, uh, it is uh, necessary to have a TAN or tax anticipation note. Um, the note that was uh, put out for bid uh, was for a $1.5 million note. Uh, the bid tabulation uh, is in your, sp in your packet in a spreadsheet. Uh, based on the finance director's recommendation, uh, we actually went out uh, for both tax-exempt and non-tax-exempt uh, notes. We are, of course, qualified for tax-exempt notes, but the finance director thought that uh, because uh, uh, of the low amount that we're asking for, um, the fees involved might actually overweight the savings. Uh, turns out that that was true. So what we're recommending uh, is option number three, which would be First National Bank and Trust of Newtown. Um, and the total interest cost, which was the lowest, was $22,125 uh, based on a 3% uh, fee. Uh, that would be payment due by June 30th, which we believe would not be an issue. Uh, again, you would be paying taxes on this. However, the taxes you are paying is still less than the amount of fees that we would be paying if we went with a tax exempt uh, note, okay. which is why that making that recommendation. Okay. Is there a motion? Motion. Resolution. Is there a second? I'll second it. Uh, any uh, questions, comments from the Just board? Just a question, comment. Uh, this is the first time we've taken a TAN in how many years? Four. Four years. I think. I think I was in my second or third year last time. I think it. my first year on this board, this this township had just incurred its largest tax increase in the history of the township, and we were we had zero fund balance. A lot of heavy lifting was done to build that fund balance, and it's it's sad to me that that we have to go back to borrowing money to cover our bills. It's just my two cents, but I'm, okay. I'm in favor of this because I know we have to borrow the money. Right. So. Any other questions or comments from the board at this time? All right, I'm going to open it to the public. Any comments or questions of the public? <coughs> Seeing none, I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Chair votes aye. Passes 5 0. On to the spotted lanternfly <laughs> item. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a consent for treatment agreement with the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture. Uh, they will be coming into some of our parks. And just to be clear, these are for township parks. We're not talking about any uh, private property. This is all township parks. Uh, they will be uh, removing uh, some of uh, the trees of heaven and is it Alanthus? I don't know if I'm saying that right the scientific name, some of those trees to drive the spotted lanternflies uh, to uh, the remaining trees. They will treat those remaining trees uh, to uh, kill the spotted lanternfly. So this is just giving them the agreement uh, to go ahead and do this in our parks. Uh, it's at no cost to us, but it's helped dealing with the spotted lanternfly uh, in infestation. And uh, we do have some more information that was provided uh, at Ms. Prescottori's request if she wants to go ahead and pass that along about the spotted lanternfly. Thank you, Mr. Schuster, and uh, thank you for announcing to the, our residents that they will be spraying in the parks for that. Uh, the Tree of Heaven, there, some folks have them in their yards, mm -hmm. and if you live even with like two and a half miles of one of those trees, you'll see spotter lanternflies in, in, in your yards. So I've been looking up on this because I've got a lot of phone calls from different residents who have uh, located the spotter lanternfly. I have noticed them in my own yard. Uh, so, the, the spotted lanternfly is an invasive pest primarily known to affect the tree of heaven. It has been detected on many host plants including apples, plums, cherries, peaches, nectarines, apricots, almonds, and pine. It also feeds on oak, walnut, polar, and, and grapes, grapes. If allowed to spread, they could seriously harm the United States grape, orchard, and logging industries. As a matter of fact, some of the wineries in um, Bucks County and even further north have been also affected. Uh, detrimentally by the lanternfly. They are very invasive and very destructive. They're beautiful 
looking creature, but they're very, very destructive. Adult spotted lanternfly has light brown forewings with black spots and scarlet hind wings with black spots. Nymphs appear black with white spots and turn to a red face before becoming adults. Egg masses are a yellowish brown color, are covered with a gray waxy coating prior to hatching. You might see them on your fence, on your in the dirt, you could see them on your patio chairs. So be looking around for it because you want to notify the county if you do see any, any of this. What to do? It's easiest to look for spotted lanternfly at dusk or at night as they tend to migrate up the trunk of the plant. If you see a spotted lanternfly, you can report the sighting by calling the Penn State Spotted Lanternfly Hotline at 1-888-422-3359. You can also report the sighting online at extension.psu.edu slash spotted lanternfly. Please feel free to pick up some additional information from the back of the room. Thank you very much, Mr. Schuster, for this presentation. Thank you. Awesome. Can I just add that, I mean, I, I don't know how uh, much people out there know about how destructive these things are, but I mean, the, one of the gems of Bucks County uh, are our farms and our wineries. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tourist destination here, and uh, I don't know the, the, the general impact to our economy, but, um, you know, I mean, I, I visited many of our, our wineries, and, and uh, I just think it would be, uh, this is a bigger issue than I think that many of us uh, realize. It is. That's why I did ask mm -hmm. to have this presentation done. Thank you. No, I appreciate that. I mean, I uh, I didn't see as many in my neighborhood, but uh, where I work over towards Bluebell, uh, I was killing <clears throat> two or three every day. They were everywhere. So uh, I think this is a good thing. I would look for a uh, motion to uh, approve. Motion. Uh, the, is it a resolution? Is it no, it's an agree. It's a consent for treatment agreement. Yeah. So we got a motion. Do we have a second? Tree guy. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You read my mind. Yeah. <laughs> I was surprised when Kathy took the lead on this one, but I mean, well, you know she protects I'm the trees. I see. I'm yes, sorry. I protect so, them. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, any uh, comments, questions from the board? Any from the public? I'm going to seeing none. I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Aye. aye. Chair votes aye. Passes five zero. Thank you. We are now up to professional reports. Leading off, the township manager, Mr. Schuster. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you have my written report in case anyone has any questions. Uh, along with uh, Mr. McKee, was able to attend the uh, ceremony uh, for Dr. Baugh. Just want to congratulate him on being named the uh, superintendent of the year for Pennsylvania. Uh, in the next two to three weeks, you will see the bid documents come out for Warminster Community Park. Uh, now that all the funding's in place and the state has uh, signed off or just about signed off on, on all matters, uh, we, can, we are ready to go out to bid. So they'll be with uh, you and concurrently the new board uh, for about a week to, to review it before we go ahead and release those, uh, uh, those bids. Um, I have posted up on the township website a number of vacancies, so anyone interested uh, in serving uh, on any of those uh, boards or committees uh, are welcome to go ahead and submit their uh, letter of intent uh, or letter of interest to me, and I'll make sure it gets included in the board packet for the uh, new board to consider. And lastly, um, I just want to say uh, that it's been a, a pleasure uh, serving um, with all five of you. Um, I just want to say good luck to all the board members who, who are departing. Um, I remember it was three and a half or four years ago, um, came in here out of the pouring rain. Mm -hmm. uh, just, I was just, just dripping. Oh, I couldn't find the, I didn't know which entrance it was, and um, sat down with, with, with all five of you. He was soaked, by the way. I was. I was drenched. <laughs> and he didn't seem to, it didn't bother him at all. <laughs> Uh, um, but uh, it, it was it was a great meeting, and I uh, I just remember saying that these are are five individuals I really want to work with. Uh, this seemed like a great place, and, and I'm happy I made that choice. So it's been a pleasure working uh, with all of you, and and best of luck to those of you that that are leaving. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure has been ours. I noticed you waited to tell us you're a Patriots fan. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell us that in the interview. All right. I've made up for it since. Communication <laughs> skills, <laughs> cheater. <laughs> we should have known when he videotaped the interview. So, uh, oh, man. It's brutal. Greg, the, the pleasure has been ours. 
I'll say a little bit more in a few minutes, but uh, the pleasure has been ours. Thank you, sir, for Thank these you. kind of words. Um, Solicitor's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we submitted our report on December 11th, and I commend the board's attention to the subdivision land development section. You'll see there that uh, this year we've gotten um, quite a few projects completed or teed up to be completed in, tw in early 2020, so I'm very happy that we moved that kind of paper in one calendar year. And I'm also happy to say that the Zoning Hearing Board finally signed our amended stipulation on December 11th. On December 12th, it was delivered to Judge McAllister, and we received word on Monday that the judge signed it. That's significant for this board. Um, we, we have an amended stipulation that gives you uh, some greater teeth that actually defines what constitutes a commercial truck, and it has the court maintaining jurisdiction, which is worth its weight in gold in that now you go straight to court and you don't have to go through the zoning uh, enforcement procedure. So that's significant. Thank you. Yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And last but certainly not least, our engineer. Mr. Thank Kendrick. you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you have our December 2019 engineer's report. And uh, since the end of the year, I have no comments, modifications, or revisions. Sounds good. Any However, questions? I would like to echo what uh, Mr. Schuster said. And uh, it's been a pleasure working with the three of you that are eventually moving on. Um, good luck in your endeavors. You. But I would tell you that each one of you brought something different. Um, I guess Dan and I have been together for 12 years. Um, I was sitting up here and got a call from a crazy EAC guy. <laughs> Everybody advised me not to return the call. <laughs> I did return the call, and uh, he still reminds me of that I uh, got back to him. So, I appreciate that. Yes, appreciate it, it now. It's, uh, it's been a pleasure, and uh, honestly, to watch you guys grow, too. Uh, I know none of you knew anything about land development. No. <laughs> still know a little bit, uh, you know, still learning, but um, it's been a pleasure helping you guys through the process, and good luck. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. All right. Moving on to the Township Manager announcement of upcoming agenda items. What's upcoming? Oh, reorg. Uh, January 6, 2020, 7 p.m. will be the annual reorganization meeting. Uh, the only thing to talk about on the agenda as of right now were the standard appointments and resolutions that are done uh, at every uh, reorganization meeting. All right. <coughs> Public comment, second round of public comment, this time on any item. Yes, sir, come on down. Mike Byers, Cornell Drive. Yes, sir. Uh, I brought this up a few meetings ago, mm -hmm. intersection in Norristown and Emma Lane. Uh, it's a really bad sight line if you're coming out yeah. Emma and you hit Norristown, especially looking north. Yeah, and there's no stop sign there, so the cars that come off York down Norristown, sometimes by the time you see that car, you have to almost be in the intersection. To, to see those cars coming. And the last meeting I was at, on my way here, because I go through that intersection nearly every day, uh, before that meeting, there was almost an accident right <laughs> behind me. As soon as I turned off, uh, the car behind me came out and there was a car coming southbound from uh, York. I was just wondering if there's anything that could be done there, either improve the sight line or even stop sign there, because uh, it's, it's Emma and then across from that's the uh, Kingdom Hall parking lot exit and then uh, Norristown Road doesn't have any stop signs there. Uh, usually I'm going north on Norristown and turning left or coming out Emma Lane. I rarely come. You're talking about putting a stop sign actually on Norristown? Yeah. Is that a state thing or is that us? It is a really bad vantage point yeah. to get out of there. It's a horrible I, I, gotta, intersection. I, I, I do have to say, same exact yeah. thing just happened to me yesterday. Yeah. I see, yesterday I see it a lot mm -hmm. there and sometimes it's to me because you, you really have to nudge out into that intersection yeah. and those cars coming southbound don't have a stop sign and, and they, they fly just, yeah, they, well, they do. how much i mean how much of it is the shrubbery at that corner property i think a that's lot of it's of it. the sight line yeah. it's a really yeah. because you can't see that i mean it's 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 right cut a little bit but it. not enough that you you really have to pull out right, a little yeah, bit to see anything we'll, we'll take another look at it uh we can even have the traffic engineer uh look at it as well um, my guess is that it wouldn't meet the warrant uh, for a stop sign there, uh, but we can certainly go ahead and look at it. Maybe if there's other things with sight lines that, uh, that we can do, we'll check that out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ferris. Ms. Boyle. Hi, Pat Boyle, Grand Avenue. I have a pet peeve in the township, mm -hmm. and you mentioned it tonight when you were reading um, the different uh, intersections. North Norristown Road and South Norristown Road, 
don't exist. There's Norristown Road North and Norristown Road South. Newtown Road North, Newtown Road South. The numbers start at County Line Road and go north. There is no <coughs> south on Davisville Road or Newtown Road, or, but it says it on the street signs on, oh, okay, on Street right. Road. And when you're giving somebody directions and somebody's not from the area, it's very confusing. Mm -hmm. So if PennDOT ever goes to change the signs, could we get them corrected when they're changed? I will never make a commitment for PennDOT. But no, but <laughs> at, can, we, can we ask that they be Oh, corrected? we can ask, yes, yes. Okay. No, no doubt about yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, I don't expect them to change them just because I don't like them <laughs> or that they're incorrect. But if you know, we're in discussions with them, that's just something that always drives me crazy. Fair enough. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Paul. Yeah, well, what did GPS say? I, I never noticed. I'll have to check it out next time. Right. Any other public comment? All right, I'm going to close that one up. All right, we're now on to supervisor comments. I'm going to call an audible, and I'm going to ask Kathy and Mark to go first with their comments. So. Okay. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> oh, yes, thank you. We're waiting for them all night. Yeah. All right. There you go. Hey, okay. <laughs> All right, so first I'd like to say congratulations to Brian Monroe with everything he went through. I'm sure um, you must be very happy that you, know, you won your, your election for clerk of courts and I wish you the very best. I'm gonna miss serving with you on the board uh, and <coughs> you'll always be my brother. <laughs> I also would like to um, thank Dan and Jason for their service to the township. Uh, anybody that volunteers in the township obviously really cares. Uh, it's been a pleasure to serve with both of you and I wish you both the best. Uh, I want to also say Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Holidays. Wish all of our residents and employees and professionals good health, prosperity, and happiness in the new year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Monroe, I, again, I want to wish you all the best. Thank you. I'm, I'm really sincerely glad that your, your health issues are, are doing really well. Thank you. And, and I hope that continues. And good luck in your new job. I know you have a lot. A lot to do in your new job, and, and I wish you a lot of success in that as well. And, and you will be missed here. But we'll keep in touch. We're still going to have the Fantasy Football League. You're still oh, going to do that, right? Absolutely. Okay, so we'll still have our Fantasy sure. League. Excellent. They win it again this year. And Dan and Jason, I want to thank both of you for your, your continued um, love of this township and your service to this township. Sure. I, I do greatly appreciate it. I know we haven't always agreed on things, but in the end, We've all thought in the same direction and hey, it's about the township and just trying to do what's right here. Hey, I, I'm never, I'm not always right either, believe me. <laughs> but awesome. try to do, you've always tried to do what was right and, and I appreciate Thanks, it and I, I wish you luck. I think you guys will be sticking around in some volunteer we'll stuff, be, I'm we'll sure. We'll be around, so. yeah. you, you know. And I want to I'll thank our professionals. You, again, you guys did a terrific job for us this year. Thank you, Amanda, thank you. Greg Schuster, thank you again for, for another year. And, and I know Judy and Ken are here, and I, I wish you all the luck, too. I, I really do, because you guys have some real tough decisions to make, like sit jumping right into the fire, which is not, is not easy. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and, and absolutely. But I, I, I wish you the best. I really do, because you have some really heavy decisions to, to make. And, 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 I'm, and I know your heart's in the right place, and, and hopefully together we'll be able to work together and get, get, get everything where it's supposed to be. And, and other than that, I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, and a Happy New Year as well. And please, over these holidays, please don't drink and drive. The chief is not looking for any overnight guest over at the uh, police station. So please don't drink and drive. You have Uber. You have Lyft. You can call my son, Jack. He'll come get you for 10 bucks. <laughs> and, if, and if he's picking you up at Tony's, you have to get him to season fries, too. That's part oh, of the okay. deal. That's part of the deal. But please don't drink and drive. Don't. You see it every day. There was one at Cotman and Tarsdale last weekend. which was just horrific, horrific. Mm -hmm. And that, that stuff just has to be avoided. So please don't, don't drink and drive. But have very merry holidays, though. So that, that's all I have. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. McKay. Uh, I, I changed the order just to allow the outgoing supervisor to go last. And with that, uh, Mr. Monroe. Uh, thank you very much. Well, um, well, first of all, Merry Christmas and, and uh, Happy Hanukkah uh, as well. Um, you know, I, I would like to say that the one thing that I've learned from being up on this board uh, is that it's ne it should never be personal. Mm -hmm. It should never be personal. It's, it's, we might not agree on everything. Uh, but, you know, in the end, you know, we could all be part of a fantasy football league, which, by the way, I would like to say the chair is in the championship. I know. Uh, he's, he's, he's got a shot. Um, but uh, uh, so, yeah, I mean, obviously everyone knows that I will be going up to the um, 
clerk of courts office uh, in Bucks County. I'll be the Bucks County clerk of courts. Uh, what is that essentially? It's just all criminal court documents go up to the county, and uh, you just make sure that it goes where it's supposed to go, and you make the judges happy. So, um, and there's some more to do than that, but I don't want to bore you. Um, so, again, thank you very much. I appreciate it, and um, again, and happy New Year. Thank you, Mr. Murrow. Mr. Rick Phelps. Well, I want to thank everyone and um, Happy New Year's, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Um, I've always been a man of few words, and there's no point in changing now. So, uh, just want to, I really do appreciate the opportunity to serve the people of Warminster, and I appreciate the opportunity to work with you all and our professional staff. Um, thank you. And um, yeah, I'll be around. I'll definitely stick around. That's it. Thank you, Mr. McPhillips. Uh, I'll take the time that you didn't use. So, <laughs> that being said, we do want to get to dinner, so I won't take too long. Um, it, it, uh, first of all, thank you again for this beautiful plaque. Uh, it was a dream come true to be elected to public service. Um, the ability to serve this township over the past six years uh, has been the greatest honor of my life. Uh, deciding not to seek re-election was a difficult decision in one part, but in another part it wasn't that hard because I have a lot waiting at home for me. And, uh, and I look forward to, to that phase of my life now, and I look forward to serving this community in other ways. Uh, as many of you in this room have, um, I look forward to joining you in those ranks. I, I, I wish Ken and Judy and whomever uh, joins you on the new board uh, to replace Mr. Monroe all the best in, uh, in this upcoming uh, term. Uh, you know, this, your success is warm Mr. success. I've said that before, I truly believe it. Uh, and for first and foremost, I want this town to succeed and to thrive, and I, I wish you all the best in that. Um, I do want to just mention a, a couple things. I want to thank this board for voting me as chairman. It meant a great deal to me to be able to serve as chair this year, and uh, it, it, it was truly an honor, and I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, there's a lot of people over the years that, that helped us and helped me along the way. The... You know, when I look at the Board of Supervisors, Brian and Kathy, uh, you know, I, I knew you guys only in passing before your election in 2015. Um, and I've, I learned a lot from serving with you. I, and I learned a lot about you as individuals, and I'm, I'm blessed to have had that opportunity, and I thank you for that. Thank you. Um, other board members who served with uh, one of them in the room tonight, Mr. Wayne McCullough, uh, Scott DeRosa, Leo Quinn, Tom Panzer. Uh, they all helped me along the way. Uh, but two gentlemen really uh, were with me all the, through my entire term. And whether or not we always agreed, yes, that, that wasn't the point. The point is that with all the questions, all the battles, they were there with me. And uh, good and bad, that they, they, I've always had their support. So uh, Mark and Dan, thank you. Uh, and thank you for your service to the township. And Mark, thank you for continuing on. I want to thank the staff. Uh, led by Mr. Schuster. Um, Mark kept telling me how important it was to have a good relationship with the, with the, um, with the, what is he, township manager? Yeah, <laughs> the township manager. And I was like, how hard can it be? With Mr. Schuster, it's not hard. Mr. Schuster is an excellent communicator, um, and you made this year uh, much easier on a neophyte chairman. And your service uh, to us during my term has been exemplary, and I thank you for it. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ryanuzzi, thank you for everything that you've done, uh, all the advice that you've given in your service. Uh, and the same goes for Mr. Bartle. And, and, the, and the people before you, I also owe a debt to uh, Mr. Savona and, and, and Mrs. Eberly. Uh, they all helped us along the way. Uh, Mr. Kennard, uh, it was an education, <laughs> and it was a pleasure, and I thank you for it. I thank Karen for everything that she did, too, to assist us. And last but not least, there's a lot of people in this township that I didn't get to interact with on a daily basis you see all the time. And th th those were our, 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 the people working in administration, the people working in public works, the people working uh, in, the, in the police department, in the, the, the municipal authority. They're the ones who make this go. Um, and the ability to sit up here and represent them and try to represent their best interests was, was, was an honor. I do want to mention just a couple other names as a thank you. Uh, and those would be uh, um, Megan Weaver, Catherine McGovern, uh, Sky Sorosa. I'm saying Sky's last name correctly? I have no idea. Nobody does. Tracy <laughs> Reeve, John Maccarelli, Chief Donnelly, 
Eric Lindsay and Karen Whitney. Uh, these are people over the years who, who went out of their way to, to help me and uh, really uh, gave of their own time and they didn't need to do that. Um, this is a great township. It's gonna continue to be great because people who care uh, run for office and serve on volunteer boards. And uh, I look forward to seeing what you guys do in the future. Thank you for the honor uh, and thank you for the support. And uh, we will uh, see uh, everybody at next time, whatever that time may be. Um, and oh, there's one last person I almost missed when I was, I was going through this list and it's right here. I missed the assistant township managers. So I, I would have never heard the end of it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Amanda Zimmerman, uh, thank you for all that you've done the last couple of years I've worked with you. Uh, and, and your predecessor, Randy Allen, also did a terrific job. So all these people had a role. There are hundreds of people behind the scenes who make this township run, and they're the ones who deserve the credit. And, um, and they have my admiration and thanks. So with that, um, it's time to take my leave and let's go to dinner, right? Can I get a motion to adjourn? Absolutely. We're out of here. Thank you, everyone. You have stuff on me?